Wag wag lids, before we start today's amazing episode of Have A Word, we need to tell you about our Patreon, which is the biggest Patreon in UK comedy. Yes, it is. Not only do you get early access to public episodes, discounts on merch, and all that sort of jazz, there's different benefits for each different tier you sign up for, starting at just three quid a month, which, as we've always said, is less than the price of a fancy coffee. The big thing, though, you get an extra bonus episode of this every single week. It's between an hour and an hour and a half of top shelf Bullshit. We save our best stuff for the Patreon episodes, and it's only available at patreon.com slash have a weird pod. And we've got the full back catalogue of every weekly Patreon exclusive going back to May 2020. And on top of that, the Patreon exclusives, all the lock ins, the ghost hunt, the live show, and we've got more shit coming. We really have. Patreon.com slash have a weird pod. Sign up from just three quid a month. Support us. You get more stuff. Everyone's a winner. Now fucking go and do it. Now. And enjoy today's episode, because it's going to be a belter. Yeah. Pulled me groin this morning while I was wiping my ass. Oof. Just Which, a standard position, hovering over the seat, or were you gone something a little you bit? You hovered, yeah. Yeah, I'm a standard as well. I used to be a stander, and if I if I'd remained a stander up until my adult life, I wouldn't have pulled me groin. I was just twisting a bit. Ow. I was twisting a bit much just to get me hand between and below my balls, and it, it it's gone. Just a normal speed, or was it just a fast wipe? I was rushing. Uh, hey. Rushing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> not, not like the nationality. My word, my shit. Are you a sitter, Dan? What for? Shit? Yeah. No, when you wipe your body. Um, Unless it's been something, you know, monumental, and then I have to stand just to sort of, like, give it the round of applause it deserves. <laughs> oh, see, I'm a... I'm a, like a me, stand do you stand no, all I'm the way I, up? No, you can't. I used to do that. Can't stand up until I was like 25. I used to stand up. Why? And then I realised what I was doing was just staining the inside of my ass cheeks because it just spreads it all over it, doesn't it? Irreversibly. Exactly. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good Saturday morning for the Patreons. Good Monday morning Six for the pubes. 6 a.m. I nearly plopped in Asda before. Did you? Yeah, I think I'm trying to phase out the energy. I'm, try I'm trying to make a few changes in my life. Energy drinks need to go because I'm 40, grow the fuck up. But there is an adult version called espresso. We talked about it. That uh, double espresso, is, no, that espresso I had in McDonald's last week has now progressed to a double espresso. And I swear to God, I, I didn't know you the. Need to slow down. Espresso is a double espresso in a week. You're going to be on latte <laughs> in a month. Right. You're going to be mainline in Kenko. <laughs> Dan, you've got a bit of coffee around your nose. <laughs> Don't fucking judge me. <laughs> I had a double espresso this morning, went to Asda to get some water for the studio. Congratulations. And nearly plopped on the way to the car. Had to waddle all the way back. High speed waddle up. You know one of those long elevators? But I need a poo waddle. Yeah. <laughs> Past the nanas in the cafe, yeah. who all gave me that, oh, we've all been there, love, bound to shit himself. Well, the nanas in the cafe are probably like, at my age, love, you just poo yourself and go, <laughs> you know what? If you judge me, you judge me. Yeah. I've already done it, love, and I'll finish my tea cake. A little lisp. What? I've got a lisp. We have. No, that was the <laughs> nana. The nana's got a lisp. Yeah. Hello, you're right. Hello. 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 I've gone and done a poo. So it's been an emotional <laughs> morning so far, hasn't it? You're a bit cheeky, aren't you? <laughs> oh, about 50 years younger. And how does it feel now? I mean, I feel cleared out. Phenomenal. It, I made it, by the way. I made it, guys. It's uh, it's fine when I'm not using it. Right, so let's try and not use your groin on this episode. Yeah. Which is probably a good advice for all episodes, isn't it? Yeah, but if... Uh, me and Sam are going to watch James Bond tonight, and if she has a bit of popcorn and gets a bit frisky and I give her a pump, I'm worried I might do some damage. What, in the cinema? When we get home. Oh, right. Cock pump. She just gets really turned on by popcorn, does she? Oh, God, Adam, I can't wait. She's getting an ice blast as well, though. That sounds and like... A dick blast. That sounds like you've kept your fingers in the fridge and then gone, pow, pow. <laughs> give us an ice blast. Have you seen Jimmy Bond yet? No. I'm not usually a fan, but it's, uh, it's fucking amazing. Oh, you've been? Yeah, me and Steve went to watch it the day. It's very good. Right, yeah. Look, the adverts look good. It's the last Daniel Craig. Yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, it's so good. What do you think about the idea of the next James Bond being a woman? I'm, I think it should be a trans woman. Yeah. yeah. A man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we 
are pleased with ourselves this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't shit myself. His groin's on the men, but we've got really that's close to isn't it? what we do pretty well, quick. That's pretending to give it to the men. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, right, I think, here's my opinion on it, because we, we had a couple of tweets going, what do you think about this, lads? Right, it's my opinion on it. I think it's a bit daft that they're doing it, but I want them to do it to wind up all the, the, the James Bond nonsense. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? How did the female Doctor Who go down with all the Doctor Who nonces? Like a sack of shit. <laughs> like a sack. Because like Jodie Whittaker of... is she's a great. Brilliant. She's a great actress. It's actor so... Finn, grow up. Go actor, on. sorry, sorry. Um, but the... how dare you feminize a word? I know. How but, dare you? You're but whore. the um, the writing was just awful. So and she was awful as that role. So I think it wasn't because she's a woman. It's because no. she's shit at being Doctor Who. Yes. Yeah. Well, hang on. The script's not her fault, though, is it? No. No. The acting is. Like, you can... Has there ever been a the good... script, shit, you can, you know, throw some moves in to make it better. <laughs> Thank you for that, Michael Caine. <laughs> Could you tell us the rest about your knowledge of acting? <laughs> oh. Fucking hell, this script isn't very good. I will do more fucking end movements. <laughs> That's what you don't know about Michael Caine. I have carried a lot of shit scripts Adam, with magic. I... Hey? Script's not up to much. Look at my, look at my thumb. Look at my thumb. It's fixed again. What do you know what I mean? Oscar. Adam, can like I If you, you actually a... read a musical, it's shit because the dancing you don't notice. Can I give you a scene, Adam, with you jazz Good well? point. <laughs> Good point. Can we if you... you read a musical... I'm always reading musicals. <laughs> a lot of people say, you want to go to a musical? I'm like, nah, don't need to. <laughs> just, point give I'm making, me, no. just give me the script. Yeah, the script, shit. Yeah, but who reads musicals? No, when do what? you ever... No, apart from the actors. Right. And then the, the, the act, that's, what, that's why musicals ended up being musicals with singing and dancing. Because, because they were, they were reading scripts. the script and they were going, this is fucking bollocks, this, we're going to have to dance or something. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Every musical is just the shit script that they've plumped up a bit. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> Fact. Look, it's a, look. If we if we do this line, but we go, ah, 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 people bing, are gonna be like, bing, ah, the dancing makes it. When are you uh, debuting in the West End? There. He's pulled his groin again. <laughs> Adam, can you act some scenes off for us? <laughs> what scenes? Um, think of a film, Dan. That he's, that he's definitely seen. Wait, what that he has to what plump up with some hand actions? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. <clears throat> Devil's advocate because I know you love doing it. Um, what? right. Uh, yeah. But it's a good look. script. That's a fuck. It. The problem with that is it's a great he, script. He, he's remembered that because it's one of his favorite bits. Yeah. You know. Yes. So Do you know what I mean? Like Jack Nicholson in A Few Good Men when he's like, "You can't handle the truth." When it was written down, that was just, "You can't handle the truth." And he turned it into, you can't handle the truth. No. That's acting. That's just shouting. No. Because the writer of A Few Good Men didn't write it. <laughs> um, you want the truth? You can't handle the truth. <laughs> I didn't order a code red. Like, I think in it, I think the writer, when he was, he was like, you probably fucking shout this. <laughs> this will be dead tense. Every script isn't like, Mama said it was like, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Fucking Forrest Gump. Let's see if anyone can act it up. <laughs> Mama, take it back, back and take a lid. Tom, turn it down a little bit. Um, yeah. I can't remember what we're talking about. James Bond. James Bond. And then uh, uh, I want Bond. James Bond because they want Jodie Comer, maybe. Yes. Scouse Jodie Comer. She's bossing Killing Eve and she's a, a spy in there. Uh, oh, she's you know not, what I think is really great? Dry. I seen a video of her the other day where she's doing American interviews and she's got a British accent. And then she's doing British interviews like on Graham Norton, Scouse and accent. she just sounds like she's from Crocky. Her, her accents are phenomenal. Right. Yeah. Like she can do. Like, have you seen Killing Eve? No. Her accents and that are perfect. Yeah. Like that's what that's it. What have you got to say? Yeah. You don't want a Scouse James Bond. You're happy for it to be a woman, but no. you want to be a Scouser. That's <laughs> Listen, what it is, isn't it? one step at a fucking time. <laughs> have you seen Janine Bond? Eat fucking hell. Father old lady, be a good MI5 Bond. are on my fucking balls again. Um, Father O'Leary be a good James Bond let's not crowbar him in <laughs> I like him as well Carl <laughs> let's not bastardise my, my new yeah, favourite character I think character. like 
it, it's a bit daft, isn't it? Can't be. But if Jodie Comer is James Bond, it can't be James Bond, can it? What are you going to call her, James? This, exactly. This, this lady is called James. This is the argument from from the non woke right, I suppose they're called. Is that no? He's a man, and he's a white man, and he drinks. Alcohol, so not what any fucking Muslims doing it either. I just want it to be a white man who likes a bevy. That's what I want. Well, there needs to be a universe, doesn't there? That's what the argument is. There needs to be a 00 universe. Because this is not a spoiler. In the new James Bond, the 007 is a black woman. Yeah, but that that's that's historically been the thing. Like, James Bond is not his name. Yeah, yeah. It's the name of 007, isn't it? Exactly. 007 so is his thing. Because, like, Sean, Bo- Sean Bean... Sean Bourne. Sean Bean. Uh-uh. Sean Bean is... Uh, he's 008 or 006. Yeah, there should in be a o- universe. So 002 could be Jodie Comer. Yeah. So that... But I don't want that. Yeah, but I the want film's them- called... James Bond, in it? Yeah, but I want... So, so 007 does have to be called James Bond. I want them to make Jodie Comer... James Bond, and I want her to act like a man. I want her to behave like a man. She's not a lesbian. She's a man, and she fucks women. And she, with her dick? Yeah, with her dick. Right. She's smashing the fuck out of pussy galore, and she's doing it with a female scouse accent the whole time, and it's never referenced. No one's like, I got aren't you a woman? She's they're just like, I like James, lad. He's like, what's happening? Find some bits of please. Now get your fucking tits out, girl. What right. does James think? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's famously known what he orders. What does he order? <laughs> Pints of bitter. Pints of bitter. Yeah, yeah. He drinks alcohol. <laughs> Can I have a snake bite there, lad? Nice one. I I saw some of the sort of backlash, like, because obviously it gets all the gammons saying all the shit that they want us to say. I just saw a lot of, like, Intelligent women come back with the. Uh, can we not just have better female leads yeah. in 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 major films? Can we stop sort of trying to like feminize these l- roles to just sort of like redress the balance? Can we not just have better characters in major films that are for women, written for women, Could there rather not be than someone like in James Bond who's just like a brilliant female spy well, instead there is. of just being the there absolute. Is. Yeah, exactly. There's but two, that, yeah. But that's the progress. Instead of it just being the woman in James Bond just gets fucking porked six times and then thrown to the fucking side because he's like, no one can tie me down. In fact, there's three main, like, lead... I'm seeing it tonight! No, I'm, I'm not talking about within James Bond. Uh, there are there are strong female roles within James Bond. Q, isn't it? Like... Um, 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 right, okay, but like that's been going on for a while. But I'm talking about the actual focal point of the film, the name of the film. Stop <laughs> doing this thing of like, right, we take this and change it to this. Just write a better fucking film. It's an easy way to. I, I get M and Q confused. By the way, there's no uh, Q in Judy Dent. That's how I remember it. Is it? There's no M either, but it sounds like there might be one in the middle. Have you pulled the groin in your head? <laughs> What happened to a black James Bond? What happened? Have we just got bored of... I think Idris Elba got so bored of the conversation. He's like, I'm not doing it now because it'll just be a thing. And I'd rather just be... If I was going to be James Bond, I wanted it to be Idris Elba's James Bond. And that's all right, isn't it? Also, he'd fuck it up because he's not that good. He's fucking great. He's not. Luther's a bag of shite. Whoa. Mm. Wash your twatting mouth off. fucking dog shit. (gasps) Idris Elba was amazing in The Wire, and I've seen him be pretty shit in a lot of other stuff. He fucking ruined The Lion King, the worst sheer car. I'm a fucking tiger. I, I'm i really scary. You're not, Idris. That's not Luther. You can't fucking act. Would have been a lot worse without the hand movements, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, what are you, a little fucking yeah, boy? Yeah, but do it without, let... do it without that. No. Just don't do that. Do it now. No. No, just do the line. I'll fucking eat you. I'm exactly. Idris Elba. Yeah. I'm sheer fucking con, you naughty little cunt. <laughs> Raw. Isn't that the script, though, Dan? Yeah, I think he might have ad-libbed a bit, a bit, a bit <laughs> oh, of it. Right. Idris, can you tone, tone down the cockney? <laughs> no, I'm a naughty fucking tiger. I like little boys. Not to fuck, to eat. Yeah, sheer con's not a pedo. He's angry. <laughs> you don't like Luther? I don't like Luther, because I've watched it. It's Everyone wanked off about it. It's brilliant. In the line of duty, first season, absolute hack shite. Not even called that. What? Is it just called the line of duty? It's just called line of duty. Is it called line of duty? Doesn't. Is it just over in the first season of that? No, no it's, just an, it's just another thing that everyone bangs on about that I did not enjoy. Maybe you're wrong. Have you thought? Oh, about that? I, oh <laughs> mate. Maybe yeah. you have, have got, you just used may, that as an argument? Maybe with you me. have got a heavy prejudice against British BBC police dramas. 
Uh, let me try and think of a good one. <laughs> there probably is one. I got bored of Killing Eve as well. I was just like, oh, do you, do you know why it got ruined? Because Phoebe Waller Bridge wrote the first season and then she never wrote the next two. Yeah, okay. I'm not an Idris Elba fan. I think, honestly, I, I really want to be, but I'm not. I just think he's, I think he hams a lot of stuff up. <laughs> uh, he's amazing in The Wire. What he's if the new James so Bond was Morgan Freeman? Right. How old is Morgan Freeman now? 78, 79? <laughs> Probably <laughs> older. <laughs> Slow moving. Um, the on Dublin. Yeah, he's, done, oh, he's gone from footies yeah. to homes under the hammer. There's only one more step. He'd be a good James Bond, the on Dublin. Yeah. He just beats everyone in the air. Yeah. And that's how he kills them. He yeah. wins others. Hey, it'd also, it'd be good for halfway through the new James Bond if they just stopped to talk about house renovations and auction sales. That'd be nice. Little, like, like, you know, that's what he's into. Um, <laughs> other black actors we'd like to see in the, um, in the I, role. I think it should be the total antithesis of what the James Bond nonsense want. So they want, like, a, a white man who drinks. I think it should be, like, a Muslim woman who doesn't. Shazzy and Mirza for the next James Bond. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to that. <laughs> Book me in. I do want an alpha She's donkey. just in bars, just going, uh, could I have a decaf coffee, please? Don't want to be up all night. <laughs> And by the way, where's Javier Bardem? Because I want to shoot him in the fucking face. But she's Scouse again. Or is that just you doing your own voice? <laughs> well, Adam's, so, Adam's so Scouse. He's like, I don't care if they're black, Muslim, white, woman. Don't give a fuck. As long as they're Scouse. When do we get a Scouse James Bond? Dave Benson Phillips. Uh, Bond, you're going to have to come down to London. Fuck that. What? Dave Benson Phillips. Oh, yeah. I was bored of the Scouse thing as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he said it. <gasps> he gunges people to kill them. He does. <laughs> That's what Dave Benson Phillips does. But he has to do it scouse. Oh, do you know what? What might actually work as well? Give them what they want. So they're like, there can't be a woman James Bond. There can't be a black James Bond. Give them a white man, but make it ridiculous. Make it like Joe Pasquale. I'm not messing. That was the name in my head. That's weird. <laughs> Joe, like they, they got what they want. Yeah, do you want that here? You think this is better than Idris Elba or Jody Coba? Well, Mr. Tumbles, the new James Bond. <laughs> Imagine that. He gets shot in the first scene, it's over. <laughs> He's like, oh, shot me. Hello, hello, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> Stephen 007's Mulhern. down, 007's down. <laughs> Stephen Mulhern. Stephen Mulhern. And he's just trying to do crafts halfway through. It's fair to say you're not a big James Bond fan. I love James Bond. All oh, right. I just like winding people up more than I like James Bond. But it was good. Genuinely, it is good. Yeah, I'm on a massive James Bond fan, but I was like, that was very good. Where does Daniel Craig rate as a Bond? Because I think he must be up there as one of the better ones. I've only ever... They've made it more realistic, haven't they? They've pumped a lot of money into it. I yeah. mean, not completely realistic. No, because it's still James Bond and it's supposed to be slightly, a, like, whatever. But, like, the old ones with, like, underwater cars. I know, but what you're doing there is you're seeing that through the prism of modern CGI and everything. When Roger... Like, Roger Moore's era of, like, the 70s James Bond, they were on on a Saturday afternoon so much when I was a kid. And... Even then, you were like, this is cheesy as fuck. And I said it the other day. It's almost like the Roger Moore era is a bit of a parody because mm -hmm. they're so naff. But at the time, that was fucking cool. That was like, that was, I, I know it just, it's hard to sort of see it like that. But underwater cars where they're like, oh my God, the fucking, look at it go. If you were like, if you were a young lad in like 1970, 1971, that would have been cool as fuck. And the sort of, you know, <laughs> the sexism of like, oh, pussy galore and all that shite. And that, it's become a bit of a joke, hasn't it? <laughs> now the CGI is fucking amazing. Just got, that means loads of pussy, doesn't it? Sorry. Do you know if it was a, a, a female James Bond and she had a male pussy yeah. galore, what yeah. would you call them? Dick a plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> his middle, his middle initials A, and his surname's Plenty. He's Richard A. Plenty. You gotta give it the boy. He did that lightning fast. I knew it was. I knew it was gonna be funny. But what what made me nearly spit my water on the mixing desk was the speed of it. Take a plenty. 
<laughs> like they'd agreed it in the car. <laughs> 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 we get the the tech now in James Bond's all possibly real. Like it's not like oh my god, he's got a flying bicycle. Yeah, and, yeah, no, it's all just re- it could be real. I've seen the clips of this new one, and you watch it going, "Fuck me, that looks really good." Yeah, <laughs> even the DHL advert's pretty decent. The have best you seen, bit in the have you seen the DHL it? advert they've they've done where just there's like a DHL delivery guy, and they change the delivery address and. There's basically a Bond chase in an Aston Martin going on. And all right, yeah, it's a bit far-fetched and everything. But you're like, that's just a fucking DHL advert, and it's already better than all of the Pierce Brosnan era of, uh, like special effects Yeah, just for a 45-second fucking my favorite postal delivery dies. service. Pierce Brosnan's Tomorrow Never Dies is my favourite Bond, though. It's, it's just yeah, but you like I just like, cheese the most. So. I like that they've made it more realistic. <laughs> like in the new one, the only film I've seen so far is where he hires one of those scooters in Liverpool City Centre. And chases the baddie down on one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Little voice scooter. Is that in, is in, is that in the is, did you in see the new one? Oh, it's in the new one. Yeah. <laughs> and then his thumb gets sore from holding the thing. And then there's two scallies doing fuck. Look at that, lad. Look how good these are, they. That's Why it. have they done those electric scooters in town centres? Degree. Why have they mobilised smackheads and Chinese tourists to that? Like. <laughs> What? That's, that's all. That, that's all that's on it. Yeah. That's why they've done it. They're great. I use them all the time. Fuck you. You don't. We use them to get round town a lot. In the no, live you show, don't. During the live show, me. Shut up. I do. I've, I've like been in the city centre and got one up to hot water. They're so good. <laughs> wow. They look like shit. They do look like shit. No, I've only ever seen bell ends on them. They're no. Aesthetically, they're unappealing, but and they're quite some international tourists. Quite functional. <laughs> Flair. They're not balance. If you need something to get done in town and you can't drive because it's ridiculous, it's two pounds, it's two minutes on that. How does it work? You, you, It's an app and you activate it and you pay by the minute. Right. It's 20 pence a minute. You need a driving license to get on it as well. Oh. So activate your account, you need a driving license. Jesus. Honestly, they're so good. They yeah. need to be done How better. do they charge? How do, how do, uh, Come uh, out of your bank. You, you no, see? no. I mean, the battery, how does it charge up? Oh, uh, wherever you dump your thing, there's a fellow who goes around in a van, collects them all, and he charges them overnight and then puts them back the next morning. Is that for real? Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't it's know you'd use them. I've literally only ever seen fucking knobheads. Just yeah. like... Yeah, so you got to get knobheads. Tearing up and down the pavement. And you get turned off at like midnight to stop, obviously, drunk people getting on them. And I'm you're tired. not allowed to go on the pavements in them, but I do sometimes. Right. So I've only ever seen bellends on pavements on them. Yeah. But then even on the road, you think... People on the road like, good, I'm on the road. Like, that's not definitely that safe, is it? No. You've got a license plate and indicators and everything on them? Yeah, but no helmet. You're meant to, and you can get a free helmet if you ask them. <laughs> yeah, but you look like a free helmet if you get yeah. the free helmet, don't you? <laughs> uh, hello, I've come for the free helmet. Just some, some guy with loads of helmets going, you're the first one, mate. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> you fucking nonce. There you go. Have three. When we go to town next, you're getting on one, and you'll love it. Me and you'll do Titanic. You can do this at the front. And I'm like, Wee. Why am I not allowed my own scooter? Because I'm worried about you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'll do it as long as you wear the free helmet. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine the fucking publicity? Is that Adam and Dan from the Have a Word podcast? <laughs> Wearing the fucking free helmet. <laughs> we got Finn on one behind us with a boombox with uh, near, far, wherever you are. Why is everything so scouse today? <laughs> Near, far, fucking dead, dead, far away. All right in your fucking grill. <laughs> Wherever you are. We'd say grid, probably. A grid. Yeah. I'll I'll note that down. How was the uh, how was your massage? <clears throat> you telling us the other day on the Patreon that you were going for a little uh, a little massage. Uh there was no happy ending. The happy ending was the end. That's the happy ending. The, the fact that she stopped doing... You come before she touched you? No. <laughs> when she stopped, I was like, thank you. And then she had to help me roll over, put her arm in front of her, and I had to, she had to help me up because she'd twatted my lower spine so much I couldn't get off the bed. So I got there. She's called Teresa. So if you fancy a sports massage in the Chester area, she was fucking great. Now, I've only ever had a chi- time massage. I don't know what it was. But it was a bit grim. 
he did a job, but the whole setting was a bit like, what is this? And uh, this lady, she's about 43, very attractive, and um, just got there and I was like, I've got a good feel about this. She sort of asked what was wrong. I was like, my shoulders are tight. My daughter hung off my back. And when we went to London to do the live show, I was like in spasm. It was so pathetic. Finn had to carry my bags. And then during the sound check, the adrenaline hadn't kicked in and we were doing the sound check and he was making me laugh. And I was like, <laughs> it was bad. And she sort of identified all of that. And then this is how I know she was quite professional. I don't really like getting my man tits out in front of people. Like I feel quite self-conscious, but you know, you get to somewhere and you're like, this is what they do. And this is what this is for. And she was like, okay, so just going to go down to your shorts. And I just, it was weird because she's an attractive lady. She's like in her early forties and whatever. She's from the Czech Republic, but you're just like, yeah, this is, Hang it's on. weird. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, Teresa from the Czech Republic. Teresa spelt with a Z. Oh, wow. Ooh, right. Sexy as fuck. That yeah. takes it from literally like your ma's ugliest mate. To like either. some absolute fit European. She wasn't wearing shoes. She wasn't wearing shoes. She was only about five one, five two. I was like, are you going to be able to do this? Yes. Um, so you lie down and she started at the top and she was like, okay, so what we do is we go to one to 10. If 10 is too much, too much pain. And one is obviously not, a, not no, no pain. You let me know where you are and where you want me to stop. If you say eight, I will reduce, Okay. She was like, I went for a sports massage. She started at 12. I was like, please don't start at 12. Genuinely looked at her going, you're, I don't think you're going to be able, are you definitely going to be able to do this? No shoes on, you know? I just don't know. I was like, this will be fine. Within you think like 10 minutes. Massage shoes, like fussy boots. No, I don't know. Like, you grip, don't you? Yeah, but I don't know. It's like how she does it. Anyway, she started and it was like at points, because we were doing I didn't know you were going to do this. It wasn't the whole massage. But whenever she applied pressure, I had to say what number we were on. And it was like I had like Tourette's and I was trying to give a girl my phone number in a bar. I was like, seven, eight, 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 five, 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 four, three, eight, eight. It's just <laughs> mental. I, and I saw her go and she was like, okay, I'm using my elbow now. It's like, hey, hey. And it's not even like, you're not in pain. But you are. It was like a pleasure pain thing where you yeah. know it's doing you good. Yeah. And when someone punches you in the nose when they're sucking you off. It's just like that. <laughs> As I was getting it done, I was like, I love being punched How? in the nose when someone's sucking me off. What? Yeah, with <laughs> bit overhand. <laughs> Have you ever been sucked off by Mr. Tickle from the Mr. Men series? <laughs> oh, we've all got fantasies. Would you really like to be punched in the face while you're well, you're being nostril. Oh, I was doing a joke. All right. Okay. You said pleasure and pain. So I, I reduced that to both the two examples of like one of each. Pleasure, getting sucked off, pain, being punched in the nose. I like my comedy to be believable. <laughs> okay. Did she climb on? <laughs> Did she? No, I don't think so. Oh. But you, but the, have you ever had your glutes done? Mate, you'd love it, I think. If you play sport, she was like, do you do sport? I was like, I sit down and talk to some bell ends, quite like a high standard of that, but no. She was like, you jog? I went, I want for a 20 minute jog in May and then like walked home. I'm not a sportsman. So I think she had to gear it. But the glutes was interesting because it's basically, I just had a small woman twatting my ass. <laughs> like it really, it's just like, and it fucking, I felt like bad afterwards, but now it's it feels better. So I'm into it. What? Did she slip her, did you? Did she finger me? Yeah. No, I'd have led with that. <laughs> Did you, you know when you were like how Oh yeah Sorry uh, God yeah Do you know what Even though it was a very professional Sports and remedial massage I forgot to say She did Finger my ass Just at the end of it <laughs> What's also fun is I recommended the podcast to her So I hope you're watching Teresa <laughs> This is what we do Because she got this She was like She went um, This is so funny Because she's obviously From the Czech Republic Has worked really hard Her and her husband Live in Chester now Oh she's married And yeah And um she was like, so uh, what do you do for a job? She gets to know, know you. And I was like, oh, I'm a comedian. She went, in your personal life? I went, yeah, but also as a job. She went, for money? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm a comedian. And I do a podcast. She was like, I like podcasts. I listen to Joe Rogan. I was like, well, let me ruin your day. <laughs> Have a word pod. She literally got it up. So she may well be watching it. I re I recommend her if you if you just Google her oh, Teresa with a Z. I'd love to see you try to explain oh what God. we do to her. No, it's because he's a priest and he's scouse and he doesn't care. <laughs> you don't get it. 
<laughs> Pri- priests normally have something to say about these things. He's not bothered. <laughs> Dan, did you get excited? I can't. Uh, I can't explain to you enough how not. All right. Like it, it's just not like that. Like it re. Like as soon as you start and you're like, oh, this. You could tell I it was I, doing good. I, I know exactly what you mean because I. I was worried about that. When I went with my ex-girlfriend for a couple's Thai massage in Edinburgh, I was like, ugh, I hope I don't get, like, an obvious boner. Because it's not like you, you can... You know, like when you get a boner in public and you're just tucking into, like, the waistband of your pants? Yeah, and then jizzing your belly bone. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know when you do that? You can't really do that in the massage place because you've only got, like, shorts on and it'd be very obvious you're tucking your dick away and then also your force going to be poking out like a little... And he's his nose. Thanks for the full description. Right. <laughs> you got it? Everyone got it? Yeah, you got it. So I was worried. I was like, I'm going to be in a room with me girlfriend and two Thai ladies. And yeah. what if I just get a You're going to be James Bond in your head. I was like, what if I get a big rage and stonk on? And then what if she's like, oh, let's have an orgy. I'd be like, oh. Right. <laughs> oh, God, this wasn't in the pamphlet. <laughs> but I was like, I hope that doesn't happen. And I'm, I, I, I was... Reassured quite quickly because she just beat the shit out of me until she fell off the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's yeah, the thing is like there's a little bed and there's like relaxing oils and everything, and you'd be forgiven for going. Oh, this could be. It's just so not that it's a fight. at all. It's an MMA bout where you, you just go, out going four rounds with George St. Pierre. Did you find it re- relaxing? Because because I was like I thought I'd be a bit tense. Like oh, this is this is cringy. The only real tension I felt was at one point where she was like, okay, let me know if this is uncomfortable. Try and breathe through it. I was like, I do want to breathe through it, but there is a chance I'm going to fart, especially when she was doing my glutes. I was like, I'm just a bit tense because I don't want to fart. And she went, okay, if you're going to do that, just warn me. <laughs> Which is <laughs> basically, so she's not like oh for fuck's sake I, I need to go back to Czech Republic. So this is one of the advantages of IBS, I suppose. Is before I'm going into any small room, I try and have a little fart before I go in. You know, like like when you're going out as a kid, your mum's like, "Have you been for a way?" I have to do that with myself as an adult. I'm like, "Have you been for a fart?" I do a little fart, and then I'm I'm free for an hour or so before you go in any small room. <laughs> yeah, right. you don't do that in here. Ah, so you don't do that. Care no, we're here for hours, aren't we? Right. You don't have a six-hour massage. You've stopped farting a lot, though, in here. You've been... I don't know if it's... I don't know if the pandemic... I think I've ha- changed my diet. Have you? No. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what's happened, but I, I'm farting less. You really are. I know what it'll be. I'm what? getting more and more comfortable with Sam, aren't I? Been together for a long time now. I'm farting in front of her, so I'm not saving it up. Oh, so you try and keep your... Farts away from small women as well. Small rooms, small women. God, you can't be farting on your no. girlfriend's face. No, too. Uh, you could. You no. Too early. Yeah. Do you do you we and plop in front of each other yet? I toilet time is private time for me. Yeah. Sam likes to. She'll be brushing it. She'll come in if I'm having a shit, and I'm like, get out. Wow. I She's agree. not asked. She, she really she is, does love you. She is so. Not asked at all about any of that. And I'm like, I'm having a shit. Get out. I don't even like someone being in the bathroom while I'm weeing. She can go in the bathroom and brush her teeth <laughs> with you in the bathroom doing, no disrespect, what you do that pulls groins sometimes. Yeah. Like, I want to leave Runcorn when you go to the toilet. <laughs> Good God. Yeah. She loves you. It's lovely. She does. Sometimes she'll like be like, I'm going to the shop. Do you want anything? I'm like, I want you to leave me alone. And we need toilet paper. You've only got three left. I'm about to use them. That's what he said. That's at that time he said that. Three rolls? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Hang on. I don't use three. You don't use, you use two, don't it's you? It's hyperbole, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. you don't. No. Well, you were exaggerating to make a comedic point. Yeah. This guy. So good. This guy. The best. But in all seriousness, no one fingered me. It was a very professional sports massage. I might go for one next week. I, I'm going to start going back to physio, I think, for my shoulder. Because I'm starting to have really shit sleeps, and it's because of the anxiety of this. I figured that out. If you've only just got involved in the podcast recently, you've not done the back catalogue. Uh, Adam popped his shoulder out uh, mid nap. No, not nap. Sleep. Sleep. It was in the night, wasn't it? Mm. So you woke up and it was out. Disabled. Yeah. There is a video on Patreon of him fucked off his twat on gas and air. Go fucked back and find twat. it. Stop the tape. <laughs> Fucked off his twat. Yeah, he is in a Mate, bad way. Make sure when there's a new Scouse James Bond, they get that in the script <laughs> at some point. Bond, I see you're fucked off your twat. <laughs> get on me. <laughs> do 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 do. Fuck. He sings it. 
Jody Comer with a fag. <laughs> Jody Comer is born. Up your fucking ass. <laughs> Tony Comer. Fucks off me twat. <laughs> but yeah, when was that? November ish? You, you'll be able to figure it out before the end of the episode and put it in the description. Did you just say there. Tony Comer? I thought you said Tony Comer. Do you know that's my tour manager? Is it? That's her name. Mind Man blown. blown. Shout out James Tony Comer. Shout out Tony Comer. Fucked off, you twat. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone smokes in your world. Kicking off abroad. Couldn't give a fuck. That was our pizza. <laughs> 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 Why aren't you set in some part of Merseyside? <laughs> Scouse heartbeat. Scouse everything. Imagine James Bond in Scouse heartbeat. Scouse squid games. Lad, gotta play Tigger, I'll fucking bum your head off. <laughs> do do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a Scout Squid game would be great. I haven't seen it yet. I'm waiting for Sarah. Uh, we've got a question about it. We will. I'll I'll pause the question until next week. Next I've watched week. the first three episodes. Uh, it's it's really weirdly watchable. It would be better in Scout. Lot. <laughs> I don't even like Scout. I can imagine, right? If you know, because like the pandemic and all these like movie companies have lost loads of money. Imagine if, like, James Bond lost the rights to their theme song and they had to use the happy theme song. <laughs> 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 Female black James uh, Bond with a uh, playing. Why does it? He... It's gone to the dogs, this. <laughs> She's singing it as well. <laughs> Intervale. Yeah, Money Contes. <laughs> Wag wag lids, it's Dan. Hope you're enjoying today's episode. Do us a favor. If you're watching on YouTube, like the video, subscribe. If you're listening, follow us on all socials at Have a Word Pod. Tell a friend. Do something. Help spread the word. Also, I'm on tour next year. If you want to come and see me do stand up, get tickets at dannightingale.com. Appreciate you. You're a good egg. You're a good lid. Back to the episode. I didn't tell you about the fight I had at Cherry Cinnamon, did I? You just said everyone was really nice. You had a good time. Yeah, I forgot I had a fight. Yeah. <laughs> you killed a man <laughs> with your bare dick. Actually, did have a, a massive argument in the queue at, at, at half time after the support act. <laughs> you are a big fan of football, aren't you? <laughs> half time. <laughs> the queue was massive, you know, in the MEN. Hmm. So the queue for the bar at half time was enormous. We were in the queue for like 40 minutes. And then this fucking mank girl in a bucket hat. Just like weaved away, so there's two cues, and she we I went in the left one, and she weaved away to just like three in front of us, but not all the way to the front of the queue, on the other queue, and you could see everyone around her like the fuck is she doing, and I just had enough to drink to be the guy to say it, and I went, do you think everyone's fucking soft, and she went what mate, and I went, do you think everyone doesn't know that you've just walked from the back and stood there. And she said, I don't know what you're on about. And I went, you've moved from over there to there and everyone knows and no one's going to let you in. And she was like, well, <laughs> right. she goes, well, how would you feel, right, if I told you last week I was on tour with Jerry Cinnamon? So what do you think about that? And I went, uh, no one's asked. And she went, but I'll, I'll show you on my phone. I went, no one cares. I went, if you're mates with Jerry, go and get him to get your fucking drinks. Why is he not here? Or why aren't you backstage yet having a drink with him? I would get to the back of the fucking queue and then she's in me face like shouting and then Sam stepped in and Sam was like, get out of his fucking face now, you horrible fucking slag and fucking stand over there and she moved back and the queue were all like, rrr, rrr, and then some girl went, he should be allowed to push the queue now and then it was really bad actually because there was two people in the queue next to us who we'd sort of split our parties and put them in that queue and us in that queue, like friends we'd made in the queue all and right. they got our drinks for us. So we ended up sort of no, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. It's fair, Skipper. That's Techers. It? Yeah. Yeah, I had a fight. Eggy as fuck. The whole queue cheered. What did she... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. King of the queue. King of the queue. Which one is... Yeah, I have these arguments. Everything that you described, everything that just happened in my head. Yeah, I, I like I, literally I, let it happen. I'm like, yeah. I've just had enough to not keep it in my head. 
And the the only reason I'm telling you now is because there was a few lads in the queue who were podcast fans. And were like, you can talk about this on the next episode. So there you go. I, I um, what does she mean? By the way, I've been to the MEN to see Kevin Hart live and uh, the clientele that were there the to jazz see singer. Kevin Hart. The jazz singer. No, the uh, he's an American comedian. Hang on. <laughs> Wait a minute. Dan, you've been sewn up like a kipper. You said sewn Kevin up ha- like a kipper. Isn't that a saying? Um, <laughs> hang, hang on, hang on. No, isn't that a saying? Yeah, it is. If you're over seventy, yeah, that is, is a it? saying, though, isn't it? You sew kippers up, aren't kippers fish? Yeah. You sew fish together. Sewn up like a kipper. I was stitched up like a kipper. Same thing. Oh, because they take the bones out yeah, yeah. and then they stitch them back up so you can eat it. Don't know. Don't trust. Fish. Oh, it means you've been betrayed. <laughs> you have. <laughs> <laughs> you betrayed your trust. I'm gutted. Like a yeah, fish. just to, just to round that off. I knew you meant the comedian. That isn't a jazz singer called the Kevin Hart well, that I know of. Let me change your Thursday. <laughs> I knew that you knew. <laughs> <laughs> Someone commented like, "That's my new favorite bit." I c- I think I can ruin that for you. <laughs> yeah, it was rough as fuck. The Kevin Hart, like it was a a lot of wannabe gang stars. And I would have, everyone could have just done what they wanted in the queue because I was like, I'd have been like, I'm not getting into this. Didn't that happen to you in the officer's mess? Wow. They robbed the place when you were working. Have we not told this story? I don't think so. What? They didn't rob the place. We accidentally gave all the stuff away for free. (laughs) Yeah, but. Yeah, that's different, isn't it? (laughs) No, but it was under threat of violence, though. No, it wasn't. Oh. Right, tell the story. I thought it was. So. At the Echo Arena, (laughs) at the Echo Arena, there was, sorry, I think, like some kind of reggae night on. (laughs) Reggae night. You mean the reggae? You mean the reggae tour? Echo Arena. You mean the? You mean the reggae world tour? It was Levi Roots. It was Finn's. Finn has genuinely. Finn's probably been to it. Oh my! I love the reggae tour. Who's on? Doesn't matter. It's just reggae. It's like one of those compilation CDs. They just sell an arena out just by going, this is reggae. Which reggae? Shush, 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 shush. Doesn't matter about that. Wait till Rock's on next week. It's the Rock Tour. Which rock bands? Details. Details. Folks struggling to sell at the end of the month. So there's a reggae night on. So there's a reggae night. As in the the doors are just open to walk in. Look, it was... There was a Mobo night. There was a Music of Black Origin night, is all I'm saying. <laughs> right? And the Echo Arena. Reggae, night. <laughs> reggae isn't even like. Isn't <laughs> like it, honestly, it can get pretty nasty, the reggae crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Just Trevor McDonald and his mates. Is that the black music you think caused this? Reggae? <laughs> I, I'm almost certain it was a reggae night. <laughs> At the Echo Arena. I think it was like all the big reggae stars. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. On like a compilation tour. You know, like when they did like McBusted? Yeah. I think it was a reggae yeah. one of them. What, you mean the like, reggae McBusted? Like Britain's McBusted got man. But just I think for it was a whole fucking genre of music. Yeah. Egyptian. He's a reggae star. There you go. Egyptian. Yeah, but they don't sell it on the individuals, do they? It's just the just reggae, reggae night. night yeah. yeah, yeah. And there was an after party for. Uh, a the VIP. reggae artists? No. Fans. No. Right. So I worked at a pub called The Officer's Mess, okay. which was on Victoria Street yes, in Liverpool. It was. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> every other day of the lifespan of it, it was a gastro pub. But on this night, <laughs> it was a reggae pub. <laughs> it was a reggae. The most reggae looking man of all time had hired it for an after party. Now, so, <laughs> Mr. Reggae Reggae, Bob Marley's yeah. tour promoter. John Marley. John Marley. Yeah. Marley and Marley yeah. have... Uh, um, Marley and Marley have rented the pub, the gastro pub. <laughs> yeah. What were the clientele that he brought in like? Was it just one reggae man with a load of normal mates, or was I, it all look, the reggae I crew? Was, I, there's no easy way for me to say this, but I was just sounding harsh. It was pretty reggae. But... There wasn't a single non-black person in the building apart from the staff. Okay. Right? All white staff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, here's what had happened. Draw, draws a line, doesn't it? There'd been a miscommunication. 
right? Right. So my manager at the time, it was also mine and were you did he manage you in Zelig's? Paul. No, Chief. No, just before. So yeah, so when he left, I think that's when you came in. Important. So uh he's sound chief, Irish fella. Lovely. Cool. Non reggae. <laughs> <laughs> Riggy. I was Irish. Uh so he'd come to it the wasn't. staff. He'd come Riggy. to the staff and he'd said, Right, um, empty the fridges and turn all the taps off on the aisles because these guys tonight are bringing their own alcohol. They've paid to bring their own alcohol. And whenever someone comes to the bar, whatever they want, just give them it because it's like the, it's a open bar sort of thing. So they were going to stock the bar with their own stuff. Yeah, so he was empty all the fridges. Reggae drink. Put, yeah, put all, put all the reggae <laughs> drink in. Loads of Malibu. Yeah, <laughs> right. Loads of Red Stripe. So people would, would come in the bar like it was packed, right? Um, there was a bit of hip hop on, bit of reggae, bit of R and B. They were mixing it up for the after party, right? All, all black music, but yeah, mixed yeah, a hundred percent. Oh yeah. yeah. And then people will come in the bar and go and um, can I have a, a, a brandy, please? And we were like, yep, bottle of brandy, because that's what we were told. The quicker we get this alcohol out, the quicker we can sell our own, because they've paid to bring this amount of alcohol. Right? So if someone asks for a brandy and Coke, give them a bottle of brandy and a jug of Coke. Right? And then this guy... Who t- chief told you to do this? Yeah. Right. Right? <laughs> so, but he, he, as far as he was aware, it's open bar. Right? And uh, people want bottle service. Okay? So this guy comes to the bar <laughs> and he, he says to me, um, why are you giving everyone drinks? And I was like, oh, mate, it's, uh, it's just what's going on tonight. People have, you know, everyone who's paid to be here, it's a free bar, and he goes, this is my event, and he has an accent that I'm not going to do, this is my event, man, man, and I, (laughs) Marley and Marley, you're supposed to be charging these people for drinks, so he's then, this fella just started, because I I went, I'm just going to go and get the manager, so I went and spoke to the manager, I come back, and he's screaming at one of the young girls who worked there as a glass, she was like 18, she was like a, Glass collector, bar back sort of thing. And he's like, you're giving all my alcohol away. You're giving all my alcohol away. This is fucking bullshit. And he's lost his shit. Rightfully so. But the wrong person. Do you know what I mean? It turns out what he'd done in the mystery. He'd ask, can I hire the venue out? And can I stock the bar and sell the alcohol? So he wanted to hire a place out and sell his own alcohol to his customers. Rather than that. It's shitty. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but in his head... He's made it too complicated, hasn't In he? his head, though, that's what he's asked for. That's what he's paid for, and that's what's been accepted. And he's brought, and I mean, thousands of pounds of alcohol to this place, and we've given it all away And for so free. Chief has gone, Jesus, this guy loves his mates. <laughs> he's brought all this fucking brandy. And ideally, Adam, if someone asks for a brandy, fuck giving him a glass. Give them the whole fucking brandy. Christ, give them a crate. Let's get these cunts pissed, and then we can start selling fucking snake bite. And he got so the threat of violence you're talking about. He was threatening to smash the place up because he's like, he's he's probably lost ten grand, and I'm not exaggerating on the amount of money he's put into this thing. So he's kicking off, and Chief's just like, just carry on. And I I said to Chief at the time, and Chief's great, but I went, mate, I went, I'm not working here, and I'm not letting any of this. Like I was just a bartender, but I was like, I'm not letting any of these stay in the building. Because it was me and the rest of the staff were girls, right? Yeah. I went, everyone get out now. And she was like, you can't do that. I was like, this is all their deal anyway. And we've already given all of it away. So we're going outside. And me and the girls went to the outside and Chief eventually joined us. And then the police got called and it got broken up. And when they just going behind the bar and making their own bevies from then on? Probably, I wasn't in the building. Yeah, yeah. I refused to be in the building. Yeah, because the guys just lost it at an 18-year-old, 17-year-old bar back. Mm. Like, he's, that's not a good sign, is it? No. It, it, it was just get get everyone out and get reggae is quite a chilled out sort of music. Yeah, not if it's ten grand of brandy down. No, Man. that's what happened. There was no actual violence. It was there was just a lot of anger and justified. I will, I will add that. So I've heard of people renting out bars, but like hiring it out. As soon as you're like, I want to put all my alcohol behind the bar and have you sell that. You re- like if I was the, you know, Marley and Marley, I'd really double check as you got to the venue that everyone on the staff knew what was, because that is a colossal, I don't know if it was Chief's fault, but someone in management has fucked up royally there, haven't they? Like, yeah, 
I think what's happened is Marley and Marley have gone, can I bring me own alcohol? And c- can we do it that way? And they've gone, yeah. They must have paid a lot to get they the right to serve their alcohol. An awful lot. But I yeah. imagine they got quite the refund. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. We're Marley and Marley. Anyone? What bitch Christmas Carol? Oh. No? Just couldn't let that one pass. It's good. Thanks. Looking forward to that. One of my favourite Christmas films. Jesus, you've worked some fucking bars, haven't you? Mm. Shall we do some would you rather? The officer's mess was a right mess that night. And some officers turned up. I think you should have let that hang in the air. I think it deserved a bit of a hang. Some one? officers turned up. Oh, police. <laughs> let it hang. Touche. Do you want to do a couple of would you rather's? Couple? <laughs> a couple? Couple. Yeah, a couple of would you rather? Uh, eyelids. This is from a young man uh, emailing in for the first time called Danny Johansson. Where yeah. are you from? It's Dan Johnson. <laughs> oh. I, eyelids. I actually didn't get that at all. <laughs> <laughs> would you rather do a gig in full drag or a gig in your underwear? Finn Carl still answer, but it's a, uh, for you it's a public pod, not a gig. Uh... Would you rather you have to do this gig in full drag or your underwear? What are you going for? Does my underwear include me vest? You don't wear vests. You're not your dad. Good start. No, that's <laughs> cheating. Uh, what do I? What do I? Do I? Do my cycling shorts class as underwear? Nope. Long johns. Is it just me kex? It's just your bills. Your thunder pants. Yeah. Um, do you wear like? White front or boxies? I, we've had this chat. I'm a white front man with yeah, then yeah. cycling shorts over for the trouble. I, I knew that. I just wanted you to say it again. You wear cycling shorts over white fronts? Yeah. Must be hot in there. Steaming. <laughs> man. It's like a fucking <laughs> reggae night. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> um, I will go full drag and never reference it. Really? Yeah. Okay. I just, just, I think genuinely, I'd, I'd rather be f- in full drag than just m- my underpants. I'm, go- I'm going full drag as well, just because I wear a lot of stuff to hide how fat I am, and there's no hiding if your tits are out. Oh, I've felt that at the sports massage. I was like, here it all is for <laughs> dunk. Yeah. I need uh, a black t-shirt and a jacket to give me lines and, you know, I need all that. So I'll wear that, but pink. Where, which gig? It. Which gig are you picking? You have to do this gig. Which gig are you picking that you've got to, we've, you've got to go full drag? I don't want to do one of ours. I want everyone that comes to, like, one of the Secret Sundays or a Have a Word live show to not be like, yeah, it was, it was a good show, but fuck me, Dan looks really bad in fishnets. Um, opening for Russell Howard at the London Palladium. Good. Always about the old career arc, aren't you? Like, yeah, I want to... Russell, I was like, Adam, when we booked you, <laughs> I mean, you can do what you want. <laughs> really good, like, a woke sort of industry comedian being like, I don't want to stop you being you or, you know, whatever your truth is, Adam. But when we booked you, we didn't know you'd be in full drag. <laughs> well, it's either this or me undies, lads, so you pick. Um, Ryan Proctor says, all right, lids. <laughs> All oh, right, okay. Full drag. On a, on a pod. Do you know what he'd do? He'd wear exactly what he normally wears and put a bow in his hair. He'd be like, ah, drag, innit? Full drag. Yeah, definitely. Who do you think would make the best full drag? Finn. Do you think? He's got the hair. Who's giving him the mic? I think I'd be great in drag. I've done, I've done What a weird half. thing to all, all of a sudden have confidence about. <laughs> <laughs> You're so like, like... <laughs> apologetic and nice about everything but when it comes to drag you're like oh I'd look the shit in drag watch if you if it's... I would love to send you the video to your dad as well what the fuck is going on he's already ashamed <laughs> enough it's fine. you wear drag on the internet my friends in Turkey watch this you'll never be able to come back to the place in Turkey we're from <laughs> which I've forgotten Bodrum Bodrum, Bodrum. Yeah. yes I, I always forget Bodrum sounds like a third choice centre back that doesn't it yeah John Yusuf Bodrum, Bodrum. Adam, Standing from Fulham. Yeah. Would you rather do a gig fully bollocko or head to toe Everton with shin pads and boots? Head to toe Everton, shin pads and boots. With an Everton hat and like Adam number one on the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. people will take pictures, won't they? And then Adam's... No, you can't take pictures in a gig. You can. 
I think if Adam gets his dick out and he's full naked, I think a few people might... I mean, like me, if I'm on the bill as well, I'd be like, sorry, lad, content is good. I don't want people getting in touch to research the biggest dick of all time for medical purposes. Yes, yeah, I, I can't be asked. Full Nazi uniform or full Everton stuff? Full Nazi uniform. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you can't argue it in the press that it was a joke. You've got to own it. Why can't I? Because it's part of the stipulations of this, would you rather? What you're trying to do is get me to pick... <laughs> Ever and every time is that the game. No, you can't say, oh, what if... What about go. this? Would you rather be shot in the head and murdered nine times or Everton kit? <laughs> shot in the head nine times, murdered. I'd do Nazi over Everton. Really? Assuming that everyone... Assuming that it's not, I can't explain it ever because... Yeah. You, you're you not allowed to explain it, but you'd still go Nazi over no, Everton. No, if I'm not allowed... You'd end your career. If I'm not allowed to explain it, then obviously I've got to go Everton, haven't I? So the, the, the only way yeah, it's a yeah. realistic conversation is if I've got to, exp if I do get to explain it. <laughs> yeah. And in that case, I would go Nazi uniform and be like, you know, we made Carl, I lost the bet. He gave me the choice of these two. I chose Nazi because I'd rather be a Nazi than a fucking blue. I'd rather be <laughs> a Nazi than a blue. Yeah, I'd rather be a Nazi than a blue. I think they're more chipper. Would you rather from David Dukes? <laughs> chipper. Oh, sorry. Ryan Proctor. All right, lids. Got a would you rather for the boys. Would you rather become a devoted Christian and everything that goes with it, non-sing aside, or become a vocal, active, flat earther, in brackets, non-sing optional? Can I not just keep me Nazi uniform on? So, you have got to go full Christian, um, or you've got to go full vocal, flat earther. I think I could make... The flat earth thing work for me. Yeah. I'm good at arguing about things that I don't really believe in. <laughs> we know. I can't be asked going to fuck getting up every Sunday morning. Do does does <laughs> is this is this if you a, a devoted Christian suggests that you believe it? Cause by the way Or you are devoted in spite of a lack of belief. Right. I hate flat earthers so much. I would rather be a, oh no, that's such a cliche as well. Like, have you heard about Dan? Oh, he's fucking, he's now a, a Christian, a born again Christian. I think they're on level pars of just annoyingness. No. The thing is, the earth might be flat. It is, though, is it? It isn't, but we don't know. He, he, we don't uh, know anything then, do we? Oh, have you started already? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's, prob <laughs> Whoa. it's, it's probably yeah. round. It's probably a big sphere floating through the abyss around a star. It is, probably. though. It is, though. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. yeah it is, yeah. But? No. It is, though. But? Uh, could be. The, the thing is, they're all, it's all silly nonsense. Both, at the heart of it's both silly nonsense. But if I go full devote Christians, just got to give up some Sunday mornings and hang out with some old white people around, you know, around the corner in the you church. Oh, no. If I'm going Christian, I'm going black church in America. When Jesus, what? I'm going there. Gospel. I'm moving. God. If I've got to be a Christian, I'm getting, I'm getting, you know, black church. Right. <laughs> You're still going to live in Liverpool, though? No. Right. I'm moving to Do you know there Georgia. Is... No. Oh, oh Georgia. Georgia. Whoa. On oh, that midnight Henry. plane to Georgia. Plane. That's not. Going on the plane to Georgia. That's Jordan. not a him. <laughs> on a midnight plane to Georgia. No, I'm... You just sang a black song with Georgia in it. Oh, Jesus, I'm going down to Georgia. No, what I mean is I'm moving to Georgia, oh, so I'm getting the right. plane at right, midnight. Right, right, Not right, train, right. I wouldn't get there. Yeah. There's no train to Georgia from here. You have to get a plane. Hang on, let me check. Could you Google it? <laughs> uh, it says no direct train. Oh, fuck, there's a ferry. <laughs> um, I see what you mean, but there is black churches over here. Is that? Yeah. In Liverpool? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, cool. Not probably. It's black churches all over the place. Maybe not as quite quite as gospel, and you know Southern American. You'd I think you'd do well at a, a UK African church. Do you reckon? Oh, like I a think Pentecostal. You'd do, oh, I mean full. You know, yeah. What's the know. difference between black church and white church? The people that attend it. Yes. Yeah, I don't. I just think it's more of a community thing, isn't it? If you're if you're from a <laughs> if you're. Stay and Finn just shared a look like, is this who we were for? <laughs> With. 
<laughs> Four. Um, <laughs> I, I, it's not, yeah. I mean, if you're talking to the deep South America, I'm sure there's more going on there. If you turned up at an African church, they might be like, wait a minute, who are you? And you were like- This is in actual Africa now. No, this is here. This is in this country. Right. You know, because there's African immigrants that live in this country. Yeah, yeah. They have their own, they, some of them will go to their own church. African church, why is everyone looking at me like I'm fucking mental? No, 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 I'm, I'm listening. I think you might get a few weird questions when you were like, uh, morning, yeah. lad. I'll say, lad, I've just got back from fucking Mozambique. I was visiting Dan's ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> I do not get the reference. <laughs> um, and Welcome to the church. One, one Did I just <laughs> make you jump a bit? <laughs> you went, fucking hell, lad. One morning I woke up and I heard a fucking banger coming from down the road. And I was like, what's that? So I walked down. Church was, on, church was lit, so I was like, finding one of those over there. Nice to meet you, mate. What's your name? Uh, my name is Father... Dave. <laughs> you know why? Dave's because. Just a the... Yeah? Father yeah. Dave. I thought it was just like a patron of the church. Okay. Well, then my name is Dave. <laughs> Please don't ask me my surname. I keep it very private. <laughs> For obvious reasons. <laughs> Welcome to the church. What is your name, brother? Adam. Brother Adam. <laughs> Welcome to the church. Adam, bro. Adam Rowe, thank you. And what is your Twitter handle? <coughs> Adam Rowe Comedy. Have well, Instagram's Adam Rowe Comedy. Have I seen you supporting Russell Howard? And <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the church called? Um, uh, in the voice, you still own character. I, d I don't know what they call their churches. Welcome. It's usually like, ha I know this sounds like, it's usually like Blissful Morning or something. Okay. Or the, the Happy Day. I just call it St. George's. No, but that's not. But they're not Saint George's All. Have we'll you? Call it Saint George's am I? All. Am I <laughs> Saint George's All just sounds like a theatre in Blackburn. <laughs> it's an actual theatre in Liverpool. <laughs> I just, I, it's always it's like Blessed Morning or something. Why do I? I live in fucking the whitest bit of Chester. How do I even? How am I pulling up this? Assemblies of God. Yeah, it's always like shit. That worked. That's a good one. Assemblies of God. List of tr what? Trinitarian, Pentecostal, and full gospel churches. The China Gospel Fellowship. <laughs> the Fang Cheng Fellowship. Oh, here we go. I like the China Gospel Fellowship. Yeah, I think this is worldwide, you know, Carl? It's one, yeah. it's one called the Church of God. Well, that's cheating, isn't it? Why? I mean, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? What church is this? This is the Church of God. That's what we should call it, really. What's the one down the street? Don't know. They need to work on the branding. Jesus is Lord. God is love. Am I the only one that thinks that being a Christian, if you genuinely believed, would be pretty nice? That's just nice, isn't it? Ignorance. It's Yeah, but it, if you really believe it, you don't think you're ignorant. You think you're enlightened. Like, I can't no, that fake That cunt it. who shouts about it on fucking Lord Street Liverpool never looks happy. Yeah, but he's not... He's, he's just not a, a cunt. He's like a <laughs> lunatic, isn't he? he is. He's a lunatic. There are loads of Christians who just live normal lives, and in their head they're like... When I die, I'm going to a nice place. And that's lovely. Because when I die, I think it's going to feel like... <laughs> like, that's how I... That's would, what it's going to be like. When I go off, I hope I'm old and knackered. But in my head, I'm like, this is the, yeah, the big you sleep. You change your beliefs and everything. Abortion. Uh, like all your no. Beliefs. No, you don't. No, you don't. Why? No, you don't. That's your... That's one facet of one type of... There's loads of factions of, like, I. there can be way more tolerant Christians out there. Right. We could make our own new faction. Yeah. We could make the have a weird Christian branch and then we that it's a get out clause and we smashed it. Can In we? our one, we get right. bitches all on my our dick and every day. Sucking on my it's bones. in the gospel. Sounds weird. The like, gospel according that's to Rowie hymn. Bags. That's a hymn, though. Yeah. Sucking on <laughs> my balls. Bitches. Sounds like the officers mess on that reggae night. <laughs> <laughs> and then we take Lucifer, Lucifer. We take donations every week, but at the end of the year, that's just a kissy for a night out. I think that's what the priests do, isn't it? At most churches, that's what Father Dave's doing. We should use it for the first few rounds, and then after that, everyone has to get their own. We've got to get Father O'Leary involved. <laughs> Don't crow Barnum in, Dan. Sorry. <laughs> do you not think it would be a? Do you think that would be an apt time to bring Father O'Leary? 
Sorry, Carl. <laughs> just like, just like call back. Thanks for your direction. Oh, hang on. <laughs> no, I, I'll take Christianity and all the happy, happy feels. Yeah, as long as I believe it. If I don't believe it, ugh. Do you think it could do you you your career any good to be a flat earther? In terms of just you know they're looking for different voices. Like if you were being cynical about it, could you? Would it, is it so ridiculous that it would fuck your career up? Could be like, have you heard about Adam Rowe? He's got in the I, flat I just, earther angle. I I listened to uh, one of Freddie's episodes with that flat earther. Pigoted. The Piggoted Pod. Do check it out. I um I will never listen to another one that he, that that guy's on again though, because he drove me mad. I listened to the whole thing, and listening to because he he he's got like really staunch opinions, and then the second an astrophysicist says anything that proves what he's saying to be bullshit, he goes, yeah yeah, but I, I'm not I'm not here to uh, give you facts. I'm here to ask questions. So what about this? And then he just goes on to the next thing. And there's, it's a never-ending loop of, oh, you've answered that perfectly. <laughs> Why doesn't the moon affect puddles? Right, Is that yeah. one of those things? Why doesn't the moon affect lakes and puddles? Uh, the same way it affects the sea. Yeah. Why haven't puddles got a tide? So he's a moron with questions. Yeah. Yeah. That's what flat earthers are. But they've got to get out cause, haven't they, all the time? Like that. I don't oh, know that the earth's flat. I'm, I'm just saying it's not a goal. Well, that's the thing with with all beliefs and faith. Like, it's tricky, isn't it? Because basically, you go, "This is very confusing." Can I take a simple, like, "Oh, there's a garden. He made it all, and it's dead nice." Oh, nice. Yeah, but the no, answer's a big question, doesn't there's it? There's no proof for God. There's proof for it not being flat. Yeah, science is right in your face, and you're going, "Ma, oh, well," because yeah. it. You've just picked your team and now you're fighting it till the. It's just a community. The end. People just want to be a part of the community. They've got friends who they can talk to, and it's like. Okay, so they're flat earth friends. And if they leave... I'd, the, honestly, the the African church sounds way more fun, doesn't it? If yeah. you leave the flat earth community, you're gone. Because normal people would be like, you're still a knobhead. And the flat earth community are like, oh, you've gone now. You're not you're even allowed to the fucking coffee mornings. No, you're stuck in the middle. So once you've made your bed, you're lying it with flat earth. If we start to have a weird church, we've already got the theme song for the confessions box. Is there a theme song? I mean, for regular confessions boxes. No, that's be for that. Shit, wrong thing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Patreon.com slash have a new confessions feature yeah. is special. Go and watch this week's holy okay, shit. Okay, do you know, we haven't done Would You Rather for a while and I'm really enjoying it. One more. One more. One more. One more? One more. One more. I've got one for you. Would you rather... Oh, mate, I've got an absolute beauty after this. Okay. So, right, your six is inside your mum and your dad's six inches inside your ass. Would you rather go forward or back? <laughs> Sideways, I'd fall That's over. how I feel every time someone sends it in. What? Um. So we're not gonna do a would you rather. We're gonna uh, just end this section with a, an email we got from an anonymous lady. She says, "Hello, hello." As Dan already knows, my ex-husband is an absolute throbber. Now I can't remember what she's referencing. This lady. But I assume that she's... Does Throbber mean he's an arsehole or that he's got a big dick? No, absolute arsehole. I was informed by a close friend that my ex had joined a dodgy dating app that was aimed at finding mature women. I'm 33 and he's 44, for your information. So I joined the app, waited for him to pop up and messaged him. Instantly, he replies, we've been exchanging some rather interesting messages and photos for nearly two weeks. I'm now pretending to be 59-year-old Deborah from Southampton. I've sent him photos of his mum's tits in a bikini from a holiday we had in 2008. Leg shots from a cruise in 2010. He thinks she's hot and wants to come on her. Deborah is essentially his mum in looks, personality, interests, etc., but played beautifully by myself. I'm unsure how this relationship ends at the moment, but f- the future is unplanned. Does Debs ghost him? Does Debs find a new love? Before anything is said, I'm not that bitter ex-wife. I'm quite simply a bit of a cunt. That's from Anonymous and... Mwah, Fuck me. Adam, that, that is, is fantastic. I've got nothing to say. That's I just, beautiful. It's perfect, isn't it? It's beautiful. If you ever see on my social media that me and Sam have split up, and I don't think it'll ever happen, she's great and we're going well. But I will marry you. 
She's beautifully evil. Oh. To make I've your got no idea what this woman looks like and I fancy her. Yeah. <laughs> to make you know, to make can she work when the if we I want this lady to Do be Do you want to be the, our new office manager? Oh yeah. Yeah. We need change your name to Lynn. We need a and we need your evil. He she has made, just to sum it up, she has made her ex husband masturbate over pictures of his aging mum. Is she dead? The question is, who's gonna ghost them first? Is real mum or this fake one? Now, I think might die in this week. was offered up as a confession, but it was too perfect. I wanted... That's uh, not a confession. There's no penance for that. That is not a confession. She's not, that is a brag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a flex. <laughs> she flexed it. She doesn't want absolving. She just wanted it out in the world. She basically was going, aren't I clever? You are. She needs to let him know. That's the win, isn't it? Ooh, I she don't know. Is it not more beautiful to just... No, she never wins, really. Mm. Oh my God! Wait until his mum dies, and when he's crying at a funeral, tell him then. You're so evil. You're the level of evil within you. You're gonna is... miss her, yeah. You can still wank over her though, can't you? You dirty old fuck. Do you miss Deborah? She's gone too. I reckon she has to tell him. Why she hasn't won? I think it's more beautiful that she never tells him because also you what you're doing with your ex-husband then is potentially making him psycho angry. I know what to do. You're rattling the fucking. She knows his address, doesn't she? Just send them the full picture in the post. Just the full picture. Don't give it any context and then work it out. Oh, make him go to Southampton to meet her. And also arrange a day out for his mum on the same day. And when he gets there, it's his mum. Yeah, he put two and two together there, wouldn't he? Yeah. If he gets all the way to Southampton and his mum's there. I love how we're ruining it. It's already beautiful, but we're like, no. So what you should do is kill her mum, kill his mum. <gasps> no, you no. smashed it. Jigsaw. So the bits, Joker, mate. The bits of the picture he's seen, you make big pieces of the jigsaw and then everything else is little pieces. And you send them a custom jigsaw that you get from Hasbro.com and you put it in the post. And it. when it gets there, he'll make his jigsaw and you'll be like, oh my God, there's those legs, there's those tits. Whose face is that? Ah, it's me, ma. Because it's a well-known fact that if anyone sends you a jigsaw, <laughs> you finish it. <laughs> to- Everyone that's listening, 50, 60,000 people listening and watching, you know full well of the many, many jigsaws you've been sent. You've finished every one pretty quickly. So, touche. So after this, you've been, a jigsaw. you've been stitched up like a kipper. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe if you think he might not do it, if he's not really into jigsaws, put a note on it saying, "Please make sure you finish this. It's important." I wonder what Father O'Leary would. No, oh. just send them a picture. Just send them the pictures being wanking over with the face on it. Dead easy. Or oh, tell his mum, "Hey, your son's wanking over you." She'll ring him and be like, "Hey, John." Fuck you doing wanking over me? Be like I fucking haven't. And then you ring him after that. After you know they've watched them. <laughs> when he puts the phone down, you ring him and go. I know you just told your mum you went wanking over there. <laughs> you were because that picture that I sent you. It's not Brenda or Barbara or whatever the name is. It's your ex-wife. I sent you pictures of your ma's tits. <laughs> ring your ma back and say sorry. Yeah. Or just leave it because you've won. You've won. You've won. She hasn't won yet. I think um, you should be offering this as a service. Yeah. That's evil. To uh, scorned women. Or men. 59-year-old Deborah from Southampton. Fair dues. That's what you're into. Fifteen. What's 15 years older than you? About my age. 44. 44. Does that seem old to you? Yeah. No. If I was single, I'd have no problem parking a 44-year-old. I didn't say that. Yeah, the other way is, is that legal? No. no. 15. 14. 14. Have to wait two years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have to wait? I mean, you'd want to fucking do it. <laughs> Another ciggy. <laughs> no. Want to shag a 15-year-old, have you? Heavy, that lad. <laughs> he got him in. <laughs> Finn Taylor's coming up next. He's great. Brexit. You know there's a disturbance in the force when it's me doing an ad read because I don't do this shit normally. But Manscaped have dropped a new ad. It's important. We love these guys. They've supported us, so support them. This ultimate package includes the amazing Lawnmower 4.0. 
Manscaped, the leaders in male grooming, have done it again. Two million men worldwide that trust Manscaped with the new performance package 4.0 by going to manscaped.com use the code word20 for 20% off and free shipping that's specific to the lids to this podcast inside this package you'll find the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer crop preserver ball deodorant crop reviver toner performance boxer briefs and a travel bag to hold all your goodies First off, the new Performance Package 4.0 includes the new lawnmower. This trimmer is insane, and I dare say the greatest ball trimmer ever. Their fourth-generation trimmer features a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin-safe technology. It also has this amazing LED light, so if you're a maverick and you shave your balls in the dark, you can see where you go. And as I said, the Weed Whacker is amazing. It uses a 9,000 RPM motor-powered 360-degree rotary dual blade system you get all of this kit within the performance package 4.0 and then seal the deal with manscapes liquid formulations their crop preserver ball deodorant for before leaving the house and the crop reviver ball toner manscapes even throw in two free gifts with every performance package 4.0 get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code word 20 treat yourself go around the house see what else you can shave but shave everything carl can you shave pets don't shave you pets' balls. Just use it on yourself. 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com using the code WORD20. Aye? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to uh, the second half of today's show with uh, me, Adam Rowe. Me, Dan Nightingale. Producer Carl. Hello. Sendly Kulavuz. Hello. Stephen in the corner. Hi, yeah. And Finn Taylor's here, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Hi. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me so much. How are you? I'm here. I'm here. I'm up to here. I'm on edge. <laughs> that wasn't full of joy. No, no, no. You know, come. <laughs> <laughs> I've. Um, those are the two states. You're either full of joy or full of cum. <laughs> I've just had a newborn. So obviously you get rid of the cum. You go back up. Um... <laughs> I've had a newborn, I'm on tour, and we're buying a house. And it's just... If people, if someone cuts me up on the road, I'm following them home. <laughs> and fucking them. Fucking... <laughs> yeah. I'm fucking them, skinning them, back in a car. You know, I'm on edge. So that the, tra the train up here was, was bliss, actually. Just, just quiet, quiet as yeah. fuck. Yeah. Quiet yeah. coach? No. Just, oh, just people being grown ups. Well, I mean, it, come on, lads. It's London to Runcorn. It's, <laughs> it's not. It's not bustling. <laughs> I'm London to Runcorn. Midday on a time on yeah. a Sunday. On a it's on yeah. a to be fair, it's, it's London to Liverpool. It's not the famous London to Runcorn <laughs> Express. Oh, I, I got the London to Runcorn Express. <laughs> it's class. It's Steam. All, it's all for, yeah. Steam coming everywhere. Uh, ah, newborn baby. Newborn tour. baby. Tour. Where can we get tour tickets from? We'll put it on com. In taylor.com. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. For the morons. Yeah. <laughs> Say no to touts. Not that anyone's not that <laughs> no one's touting them. No one's touting them. Actually, touts. So I really have to do some more sales if any touts want to get involved. <laughs> so many venues have started banning resale sites. So when I went to that concert Good. last week. Good. Sam had to sort of... So she got them from the Ticketmaster resale site, which I think is a, a very bullshit sort of way of doing it because it's still above face value. But it's like, we're Ticketmaster, so it's okay if we do it. But like if you get it from via Gogo or whatever, they know that you've done it. And it, when you scan it on the way in, they just say, fuck off. And you just don't get it. So you basically need your ID to, to show yeah, that you're you the person. They, they need to change the name of the ticket over to your name and then you need to take your own ID. Right. Or you can just kill the other person and take that But that's ID. fine. I'm, I'm for that because it stops people setting up bots that quickly buy 40 tickets and then try and sell them at three times the value. But That's who is buying tickets not off the original website? Uh, you know, people who really want to get yeah. in. Right. Like well. if there's a big musician going out, like their, their tickets go like that. Who's your big musician? Huh? Who's your, name a big musician. Kylie Minogue. <laughs> right, there we go. <laughs> you know why? Just to get your level. Because I genuinely bought off a resale site for Kylie Minogue. I paid more than Kylie was asking to take my girl ex-girlfriend well, girlfriend at the time. I thought you were just a big Kylie Minogue fan and you were dropping that in 18 <laughs> months into our work and relationship. Yeah, can I just tell you, I've just, I've got the big tickets, guys. <laughs> I don't even know to tell you who, uh, Kylie. What tours this, this um, 
Post-op. <laughs> it's not what she called it, no. No. But it, I mean, it, 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 it is the post- Kylie. Yeah, cancer. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Show some respect. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Australian no. pop- oh, I, can't, I can't remember the comedian in Manchester at the time had a thing about that. I, oh, saw, right. I saw an advert to see Kylie live. And then <laughs> I realised I misread it. <laughs> Fuck, I cannot remember whose bit that That's was. I'm funny. so sorry. Um, yeah, so I paid a lot because... She went know, private. She went <laughs> <laughs> I the think old I, I saved tax. I saved Ke- I saved Kylie. <laughs> you pay for her tits. Fair play. Fair play. I uh, I paid over the odds to see the Spice Girls and then didn't end up going. I made a profit on the tickets accidentally. You're right. the fucking problem then, aren't you? Yeah. I bought <laughs> no. I bought two Spice Girls tickets from Via Go Go because I was like, I want to go and I'm going. And then there's you- too many goes in that whole <laughs> from via Gogol and I wore a Gogol. Go on. And then you moved to Japan very selfishly, so you couldn't come with me. Awful. My ex girlfriend was like, I'm not going to watch the Spice Girls, so she wouldn't go. So you went Carl first. Carl was your first Spice Girl option. Probably, yeah. 100%. Not your missus. No. Okay. So she was like a backup, and then she said no. So I was like, right, we can't go, so I need to go back on via Go Go and get these tickets gone. I gotta go, go. <laughs> Wake me up. Go, Johnny. Go, 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 go. But yeah, I, I bought them for like 240 quid each. And like they gave me 270 quid because I when I went back to them, I was like, you can sell them on for me. And they made a profit on it, which meant I got a profit. Okay. No right. name. I didn't set the price. I was just like, get rid of them. Have you ever bought from a tout though? Because I've never I've never actually done that. Have you have you no. bought from a tout before? No. Only for fussy. And all I'm, right. I'm, I avoid I'm just too scared cost. that I'm gonna get ripped off. It's I'm literally thi- going to yeah. spend 100 quid on bus tickets. It's that thing where you're walking outside the ground and they come to walk, and it's the same thing when I have a build around. I just go, I'm, I'm too middle class for this interaction. I've, I've bought my ticket already. What are the rules? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. I've, yeah. <laughs> the fact that you need to do this makes yeah. me mistrust you. Yeah. <laughs> I just also feel like it's going to be a sting operation. And I'm going to go, yeah, all right. And then police are going to flood and <laughs> handcuff. What are you buying tickets for? What? <laughs> the, the Peter Fowl party. Hey, Peter Fowl party. Uh, Carl just did an example of something that would be awful to buy tickets for. <laughs> but weirdly, sold out enough that touts of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Via Go Go don't deal with Peter Fowl party ticket sales. They've just got some rules. Oh, are you place. saying you're worried it's going to be a sting because you're buying above face value tickets no, just for they, anything? They, 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 that's what they do, isn't it? The police, um, they try and arrest people who are ticket you, touting. Yeah. Yeah, but not like the person not buying the buyer. them. Not buyer. You're not, not going to do I'm nine above, months. I'm above this world of crime. <laughs> I've come up here from London. I play by the rules, all right? I bought an off-peak ticket and I got an off-peak You train. came on the Runcorn Express <laughs> with me and the other Runcorn I'm to not, London I'm businessmen. Not, I'm not walking around Euston looking for people in shady trench coats giving me a fucking tout <laughs> for this train, all right? Have you never tried to get on a train with a ticket that you have not got? No, I'm just, uh, I'm just not getting. I've, I've got on. I've not got trains that I'm meant to be on, just because someone. I just realised I didn't want to do that gig in fucking oh, Southport, yeah. and I on the <laughs> I, on the booker. It's like, oh, I was like, oh, the trains, the the lines are. It's not. They're fine. It's, oh, the you know the standing by the board at Euston. It's oh, it's chaos. It's chaos here. You know, making it all big. And I'm like, oh, they've turned the platform. And he's like, oh, you can you can get it if you get this train, you'll g- get it. And I was like, yeah, no, oh, it's, oh, it's gone. I just watched. I could have got it, and I just watched the train <laughs> to Southport, <laughs> the Southport Express. Yeah, the Southport <laughs> Express. London to Southport. Those, Express. those are the two lines. Oh, hang on, does it, no, does it start in Paris? <laughs> <laughs> is it Paris to Southport? And I know exactly which promoter you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> and he definitely doesn't listen to this. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's a, a brutal one when the journey's t- too far. And the gig was put in too long ago. Yeah, because a gig in October, when you're in April, and you're like, well, here's the email. October is, I think, let me from April. It's a million years away. Yeah. I'll just say yes got, because I see, like money, and then you it see gets that closer. blank space, and you go, "Well, my self esteem. I need to fill that space." And then you get there, and you're really busy. You go, "I'm not fucking doing that." <laughs> <laughs> Southport. Yeah, it really sticks out, doesn't it? Like yeah. North London, North London, Hammersmith, Southport. Yeah. Shit. Fuck that. Yeah. And the the busier you get, and the more financial freedom you get from having success in comedy, where you start doing more TV work or. Your podcast does all right. You're just like, I just don't want to do that gig ever again. And I'm yeah. just never going to 
Yeah. I've definitely, like, <laughs> do you know when I was a lot more skint? Or, like, even now I would still try and do it. I'm so alien to so you're like, no, I got this ticket, and that's the train I get. There's, after, which we've experienced recently, after 3 p.m. in London, until 8 p.m. you can't get home unless you've got a peak time ticket. And I It's, like, three times more expensive aren't than the It's insane. It's, like, 300 quid on the day for a one-way ticket from London to Liverpool. And I've tried to play stupid as if no one's ever tried that before. And the guy, like, checking the tickets is just looking at you like, I know exactly, I've been like, yeah, mate, here is my ticket that, like, put me off peak one that I have purchased and I am going to... Good afternoon, <laughs> sir! <laughs> <laughs> right, don't, don't, no, not one bit of, like, lack of confidence. Hello, Inspector. How stupid did you play it, though? I think that's... I was like, yeah, mate, this is my ticket for that train right there. How are you? How's the family? Kids okay? <laughs> well, yeah? how, How's your mum? A mild, you... mild level of threat going in there. <laughs> that's my train. How are your kids? Do you know where they are right now? <laughs> where are your kids right now? I'm getting on that train. <laughs> you love those kids, don't you? Because I buy tickets to paedophile parties. <laughs> <Yeah>. Remember that. <laughs> and they look at you like, that. this isn't a ticket. And I go, oh, oh, off peak. <laughs> peak now. <laughs> Sorry, well, are, you going, get... are you going a bit foreign there? <laughs> Just to try and back out. Oh, eh? the off big train. Eh? Well, French. 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 Because you said Paris. <laughs> oh, no. I do not know what the off big big is, but my mother is dying and yeah. I have to get back to Liverpool to see her. Yeah. Wow. Please let me on the train. They tell, I'm the, the train, the, the guy's asking for tickets about like, this guy's definitely French. I mean, he's wearing a Liverpool away kit. And he's trying to get a fucking train to Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> and he's wearing Reebok Classic, yeah. but he screams Parisian to me. <laughs> oh my God, I do not understand. I am the cousin of Florence Cinema Pongon. <laughs> 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 that is why I support the Liverpool or Florence. <laughs> <laughs> You don't even believe it yourself. You know, <laughs> oh, Sutton. Um, I, I laughed at the thoughts of someone from France calling him R. Oh, Florence. <laughs> I can't. Oh, Does it yeah. ever work? Do they ever let you on? No. Never. There's, there was one time I managed to get on because there was no barrier and no check. And I got on at like five past four coming back to Liverpool and then the conductor come round. And he was like, that's an off-peak ticket, that lad. You just got to upgrade to a peak ticket. It's going to be a few hundred quid. And I went, mate. I'll just get off at the next station because I haven't got it. This was about seven years ago or whatever. I was like, I haven't got it. So I'll just get off at Stafford. And he went, oh, I just, just stayed there. And he just fucked off. Yeah, why not? Doesn't hurt him, does it? No. He hasn't got a fucking quota. Of people Unless like it. there's going to be an inspector getting on for the inspector, yeah. which happens sometimes. They check that he's checked everyone. Do you not reckon he goes home and he just closed the door and he's just like, oh. shit, my job. <laughs> <laughs> Just like his kids don't respect him. His wife's fucking the bus driver or something. Yeah. Takes it along with him. Daddy, yeah. daddy, did you make everyone upgrade today? It <laughs> was off peak. Yeah. <sighs> you failed us again, daddy. Yeah. This is why Christmas is a shit. <laughs> Christmas is a shit. Up because he didn't make everyone upgrade. Wow. Do you Honestly, think they're on commission? If, if you're going to be a good train inspector. If they were on commission. Every they... French scouser needs to pay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. If... If they were on commission, I'd 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 understand it. Do you know what I mean? If they if they got like a commission on the the fee that their tickets cost. Oh mm. no, that's a rat though, isn't it? No, but you'd get it then because then that's their job. But With their tips. job and their life is affected nil by making me pay the proper. Traffic fare. wardens have quotas. Yeah, but what you're saying is all traffic, all rail inspectors should be dead sound and let everyone do what the fuck they want, and that's obviously doesn't work like that, does it? So, like, you can take your your individual, like, oh, well, he was sound with me. But if he does that with everyone, the fucking train's an absolute riot, isn't it? This is why train. you get the train <laughs> on your fucking ticket, Max. <laughs> Show some respect <laughs> to Avanti or whatever fucking operator you use. Whatever made up, painted over the Virgin <laughs> Rail fucking bullshit <laughs> company name. Broad Avanti. Company, yeah. Makes me think of Peter K every time. Um, are you? Do you ever drive? Because oh, like, yeah. my perception of like London, uh, the, no one has a car. I'm driving everywhere. Right. Yeah. Right. How's the petrol shit been? Because up up north, we are literally bathing our children in, well, in petrol that's the thing for a laugh. Is that, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just going on tour and just filling up 
in fucking Southport. Shrewsbury or whatever, right. and they're coming back. And it's, yeah, it's, no, it's mental. But I have a theory, because I'm a new father, and really at this point you're just, you're looking for reasons to leave the house. <laughs> oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, you know, the dog is such a blessing. Because uh, <laughs> friends of mine have had kids who don't have their dogs. They're just fucking, they're looking through their store cupboards like, ah, i got to go to the shop. We're out of star anise. <laughs> you know, they're looking for any, any excuse to get out of the house. And uh, I don't think it's a fuel crisis. I think it's just a bunch of new dads. They're like, I've got to fill up, honey. <laughs> the tank's full. Ah, you never know. <laughs> You're sitting on a forecourt for three hours rather than listen to that hell. How's your dog doing? Absolutely fucking knackered. <laughs> your dog, yeah. Got dog, shin splints. The dog's broken. Yeah. <laughs> the dog's taking the new baby the hardest. <laughs> fucking knackered. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, man. Brutal. You're feeling the sleep deprivation? Because these, yeah. these, these, don't, these yeah. don't give me any... Like, I've been through, cha- like, having a kid <laughs> recently. Been through childbirth. I've been through childbirth. <laughs> hey, it's, it's 2021. Yes. God, God knows what people I was can actually do now. in the room this time. Yeah. Um, and they, they gave me no fucking sympathy. A little bit here and there, but you were pretty like, get on with it. But are you, it's... You're feeling it. Are you still yeah. in the blast zone of like the... Well, we had a weird... Exp- I mean, because she was so premature. And everyone's fine now. But um, she was seven weeks premature. So you have like seven weeks in the neonatal unit. Oh, wow. And then you get home. And then it starts. But you've had this like, you know, run up. And the neonatal unit... Fuck, some of the other mothers, fuck it hell. They were the most stressful thing as the other... You know, because the newborn baby's in intensive care. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's fucking so, crying. Yeah. They're just getting the tube out of fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, <laughs> hang on. <gasps> <laughs> uh, <laughs> mate, what they can do now in. The, I mean, my daughter was born 33 weeks and is like, that's fine. That's seven weeks early. There were kids in there, like 25. There was a kid that was born <laughs> 19 weeks, oh, right? Jesus. Before any genitalia was developed. Oh, God. And they then watched this penis blossom <laughs> in an incubator. Like Cress. Yeah, I took a fucking time lapse of it. <laughs> <laughs> Put David Attenborough over the top of it. <laughs> and weirdly, Facebook wouldn't let me post it. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, that's another conversation. Yeah. But um, you need to host a party. So. <laughs> no. But uh, really ticketed. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's that's about Jeffrey just... Epstein. He knew how to sell tickets. <laughs> but um, anyway, the uh, no, the thing the Nineteen, thi- 19, 19 weeks, weeks is frightening. Yeah, I mean, we were. <laughs> The thing you don't, you know, obviously it's, it's intense and there's loads of shit, you, you, it's different. But the thing I didn't realise is that, so she's born before she can suckle. The kind of Maggie Simpson, she, she can't do that. For uh-huh. So she's fed through a tube for the first two weeks, but she needs milk. And so like a few hours after the operation, my wife's like in, you know, she's had a C-section or whatever. And the midwife's there and she's like, right, baby needs milk. It's a, the milk, it's a bit early for the mum's milk production. So what we're going to do give you a syringe and you're going to get what you can and run it over to the kids and i'm, I'm the like, colostrum they call it don't yeah, like the good I'm like, stuff i'm like i don't i'm like have you not it's not someone else that could do this <laughs> like why it's, she's like you have, you to, have do, to do it yeah i'm like i don't have to i'm not fucking doing it and she's like we're really short staffed and i'm like <laughs> fucking, fuck the tories it's brexit isn't it it's fucking no one to pick the fruit no one to drive the lorries <laughs> british taxpayers gonna milk her own fucking wives i mean <laughs> Where's the Eastern European this bloke to milk your wife? This is a, if there's a job for a Romanian, it's this, isn't it? Because they are, that's what they're used to under communism. They come back, the shelves are empty. Hilga, get in the sling. You know, it's what, uh, that's what they're used to, these fuckers. But uh, I don't want some wise guy from Kent milking my wife. Do you know what I mean? I want someone with a bit of brawn. But uh, yeah, I, I had to get on with it. Did How you, did you do it? So, quick tip. Yeah. You want to unlearn everything you think you know about boobs. Right. None of this tickling and sort of firm grip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, imagine you've just... You're not you, trying um, to turn it on, are you? <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's a, it's a different... You know, it, like, uh, imagine you've just met your new girlfriend's father. Do you know what I mean? Kind of, yeah, you, like to, you know, that's the kind of energy you want. You want to corkscrew the ducks towards the, the nipple. And uh, I'll tell you, I wish I was wearing squash goggles because there is a bit of splashback. And, uh, squash goggles? 
the uh, the old the That's old. That's the most offensive thing you've said so far. <laughs> the old wife's revenge, as it were, <laughs> just you in the eye. But um, yeah, it's it's hard. It's it's hard work. I had to go home and get a fucking milking stool. My back was <laughs> back was done in. Dan, didn't you use your mouth? Yeah. Dan used his mouth for the same Oh, the thing. midwife came in and was like, whoa, why is she on all fours? And I was like, listen, <laughs> you don't know my wife. She bucks, she rears. You've got to fucking get her in a headlock. Whoa there, you know. And, uh, yeah, but he was like, like, why has she got a bell around her neck? Listen, <laughs> there's a lot of mothers in this unit. I don't want to milk the wrong fucking one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a faux pas. Yeah. Yeah. Stay still. Yeah. Hey, hey. Oh, sorry, Julie. I didn't see you. There. You were safer than that, weren't you? So my uh, wife, my wife, my wife. Uh, again, no Romanians. Uh, she was having trouble getting her milk through, which means it's just not. Oh, right. Nothing's happening. So and we a, were on like day three of, like we were at home. Back up. So it was. It was time so what's, to what's go. The, what's the baby doing at this point? Uh, bottled. Right. So she, she's <laughs> bo- <laughs> bottled. <yeah. laughs> Fuck off. Knocked, uh, out, he, for, knocked so, out for three days. So he'd been on the bottle. Soon but, it came out. But Laura's like, I really, we really need to get the milk through. It's just not happening. It's, starting to, it's starting to hurt. Yeah. So she was like, you're going to have to help me. And no one discussed the firm handshake like you're meeting your new father-in-law. Yeah. It was just... Get on my lap and give a good suck. It was fucking. So did, oh, were wow. you sucking oh. it out and then spitting it into a bowl and then putting that into a bottle? No, it wasn't like siphoning off diesel. That's that what way. I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Got it. Got it. Or some of the some of the footage of the fucking women at the pumps with plastic bags, <laughs> double bagging petrol, <laughs> slinging it. The oh wet God. bag in a boot. A fucking <laughs> petrol bladder. You deserve to die in a fireball. <laughs> yeah, you it's a bag for life. Well, let's see how long that life is, you fucking moron. No, I was just sucking the milk out. And swallowing it. Yeah, I had a little... Yeah. Oh, it's good stuff, that. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll just yeah. Apparently, the baby. it cures COVID. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> how does that help the baby? How does that help the baby if you're drinking know, the milk? I but it did my skin wonders. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. It's glowing. Uh, <laughs> It wasn't for, I wasn't like then spit it. I wasn't baby burdening it into the baby. <laughs> Talk about the middleman. So I'm what's like, the point of you doing it? Like then? Ticketmaster, but it's for my express. own. No, it's like, it's like back getting up. rid of a thing. So, and then it's. Do you know, oh, like when no. there's a bit of milkshake stuck in a straw. Yeah. yeah. And you blow it out. You know, yeah. sometimes when you've left yeah. the toothpaste too long and it goes hard yeah. on the top. And then you need to get that little, like, yeah. the yeah, little like toothpaste little, plug. Like when you used to get milk delivered and there's that bit of cream on the top to stop it pouring out. God, it's different up north, isn't it? Still getting milk delivered. <laughs> you think they put the bit of cream on top to stop it pouring out? I tell you what, it's like you know, you know, cans of San Pellegrino when they got that foil on top. That's what it's like. That's more southern. Peel that off. Shut up, squash yeah. goggles. Um, <laughs> so I just sucked on my wife's big old tats, and it was great fun. Yeah, it's good stuff. She was like, "Is this turning on?" I was like, "It absolutely is." Because I'm 40 and I could get into all sorts of kinking, and that's that's the difficult thing, isn't it? It's really arousing for one of you and just an absolute battle for the other. Oh, I think. Is it? Oh, Did she yeah. like it? Well, it's a public episode, isn't it? So no, she hated it. She, she stated no preference. <laughs> <laughs> get into it. Slapping him about a bit. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> it's good fun, though. I could get into it. Wait, this is the first time we've had a, a, a new parent on the couch. Um, like I've talked to Piss for a while because I think he's sort of over exaggerating how tough it is. Yeah, but it's hard. Oh, uh, it, yeah, it is. It is. It is. I mean, you know, there's a gender disparity going yeah. on. Like we, I'm on an N- NCT WhatsApp group, Ugh. and uh, you know, the women are fucking blabbering away, and uh, dads are staying pretty quiet. We're not adding much, but you know, the women are talking about the you know C-section scars and fucking. Bleeding nipples, and then one of them goes, "How are the dads getting on?" I'm like, "I'm not fucking answering that." <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> yeah, last night I only had seven hours sleep. It was really tough. <laughs> Glad to know other people are struggling. Talking about the, you know, fucking third degree tear and all that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Knocking a wall through. No. Oh, oh, yeah. open plan. One big. That's the end one, of the lady gooch. Like Daniela Westbrook's nose. <laughs> <laughs> She listens to this. 
what, with both ears, or is that just one thing as well? <laughs> Phenomenal. You've got to do a lot of cocaine in your funny to lose that bit, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Daniela, I know you. you. Well, that's why the baby was so premature. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sure this isn't a good way to get it going, love. <laughs> Does it completely go? Is no. It, it can, though, can't no. it? Like, that's a, yeah, it can. It's it a can. possibility. No. Yeah. It can be, a, you know, not, not in every case. It's not. Put it this way, it's a good time to try anal. Yeah. Because it's all anal. It's all anal. <laughs> Shaking her hands, anal. Yeah. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, don't uh, I don't know what that means. That, mid- that midwife did a bad job fixing that. <laughs> yeah, you look yeah. fine, love. Apart uh, from that left hand. The, uh, the cuts to the NHS are really... <laughs> yeah. Where's that Romanian? St- yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, they stitched her up weird. <laughs> uh, is this your first, by the way? It yeah? is the first. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Muscle tough, my friend. Cheers, man. Like, I think I'm a couple of years away from the old kids and that, as I've said. I hope you're not, years. though. I hope you're not. Is oh, that, no, I want it to be a couple of years. I want the, my uh, kids to be older. Is that what the court said? You've got to stay two years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Many child. Two years, I'm allowed to see yeah, them. Two years distance. Um, <laughs> but I just, I, I know this is an arrogant thing to say. I just feel like it's going to be a walk in the park. It's just, yeah, and it's not the. It's not like the worst. It's just the sleep deprivation. It's yeah, but being, I don't sleep very well anyway. Yeah, but you do sleep when you want to sleep, though. Yeah. Will yeah. You, will Eventually, you, you, yeah. Will That's you be getting up to do the stuff? 3 a.m. You're, you're getting up. I'll probably be playing FIFA anyway. Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> I should play more FIFA. That would make it easier. Uh, My wife's always at me like, yeah. Dan, come on, play FIFA. Help out. <laughs> the career mode's not been picked up for years. Uh, why are dads so selfish? They just won't play FIFA enough. The when baby is newborn. brimming with milk. Too full of anything but FIFA. <laughs> You've not given your player a new haircut in three months. <laughs> Get off your ass. Get your priorities in order. <laughs> um, no, I mean, look, we all, we all think it's going to be a walk in the park. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, it's just you can't take a break. You can't walk away from it. I mean, the other night, I, I mean, that's not true. I did. I went, I put the baby down and just went and sat in the car listened to Five Live for an hour. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you, you, yeah, so you're not meant to, you're not meant to do that. You're not meant to just leave, but you can. I've started enjoying a little sit in the car, you know. Oh, it's great. Like, you know, when you get back from being somewhere, yeah, I just sit in the car for a bit. Do you know Do you know what? Since I had a yes. kid, you know on Google Maps when it says, um, oh, do you go this way? It's 20 minutes slower. I never used to know who that was for. Now I do. <laughs> That's dad's going, yep. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> yeah. Doing that. I'm not fill going. Fill up again. I'm not, I'm not going. <laughs> fill up again. <laughs> round and round. Oh, like the warning light's back on. Fill her up. <laughs> I'm at a garage in yeah. Coventry, look, yeah. cars fucked. Yeah. I've ran it into the ground. Yeah. No, I think those little moments where you have your little, nothing wrong with that. Nothing. I love sharing my life, but I'd like a little bit, bit more of it back. Just That'd be like great. This is where those gigs to Southport start coming in handy, oh, don't they? Hey, that's you're why like, I'm here. That, that was the <laughs> post pandemic when you were like, oh, before the pandemic, I was like, oh, fucking too many gigs. And, and then afterwards, you're like, yes, yeah, yeah. a gig to anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. Just to five live it. Just to five live it. Do you think it. that's on the cards for us, five live? Wow. You know, Alice James and John Robbins done a brilliant job from podcasting to five live. I think we'd have to tone down a lot of what we do. <laughs> I think it's a fair shout. Yeah. I think we're more of a Radio 3 fair. starter. <laughs> yeah. I'd say it's too much even for LBC. I was... <laughs> <laughs> Really? I'm sick of people talking about Romanians and my wife's tits. <laughs> <laughs> we need British tit milkers. That's the point. They don't want to do it. <laughs> I'm not doing that shit. Get Pavel back. Pavel. Pavel, Pavel. Pavel and get Pavel back. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I love those people that phone in. Those clips where they just go uber racist on the old LBC. What is LBC? Is it London? Leading Britain's, Britain's conversation. conversation. It is London based on. I it? just thought. I just assumed it was leading Britain's conversation, yeah. basically angry gammon chat. Yeah, because that's what it comes leading across. Leading Britain's as. conversation into the sewer. That's the right. End of okay. Sentence. Yeah, it's just always. But I love it. I just. But your man who all the clips are. He just seems incredibly reasonable. James O'Brien. James O'Brien. So is he their go-to guy? I think because he, he does I a very good job he, by the looks of it. So he's the he's the sort of liberal one. Yeah. yeah. And then he's surrounded by... He's an island in just a sea. A lot of Farage. Yeah. They had Farage for a bit. 
There's a guy called Nick Ferrari who's just an attack dog in the morning. <laughs> He's called what? Nick Ferrari. Isn't he just? Mm. Uh, <laughs> 7 a.m. he starts. Right. And you're waking up fucking angry. You're jazzed from the minute you get up. The news and then just and loads then of hate. He's still 10. Then James O'Brien calms you down a bit. Okay. You can't sustain that kind of anger. So he's like the shaking at the He's like the L- LBC's Ken Bruce. Yeah. Just to yeah, sort yeah. of take it oh, down. Yeah. Oh. So and then lunchtime. Who's on at lunchtime? Oh, Sheila Fogarty. She's one of yours. One of ours. Scouse, I think. Is she? Yeah. And what's she like? She's quite calm, actually. The only thing I've seen of LBC is the is the clips. Yeah, same. Yeah. And it like it's normally James O'Brien. Dealing so with some fuck knuckle. It's, it's normally just someone just shouting at him and him just very sort of condescendingly telling them why they're a fucking idiot. That's quite clever of LBC to be like, yeah, we'll do, we'll rev them up and then rev them up the other way. Instead of just, so if you've got Nick Ferrari pressing the buttons That's one way. True. And then the other one talking them down and it's great radio. Yeah. That's very clever. Yeah. Uh, to, to ring up one of those shows. No, I am ringing. <laughs> the wife must be like, don't do it. <laughs> Derek, don't do it again. No! I am. <laughs> I've got LBC on speed dial for a reason. I'd like a radio show where I just get to just argue the opposite opinion to anything that they ring up and say. Mm. Oh, my God. You hosting a phone-in, as much as I do not want to work with you on it, would be so <laughs> good to listen to. Oh, I'd do it with you. I'd oh, it'd be to do fucking <laughs> great. I, would, I originally pitched it. It would be between 9 and 11. It'd be a 9 to 9, 11 hour. And it'd just be people ringing in. <laughs> Telling me what they think happened. <laughs> that, and that, that's the whole show every week. <laughs> and you refuse to deal with any of the issues of the day. No, that, that is the no only, petrol the only. crisis chat unless it's about... To be honest, the only issue I'm concerned is when they fucking flew planes into buildings, Dan. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> petrol crisis, fuck that. They flew planes. You, you're not there. Um, <laughs> and now they own Newcastle. Look at that. They do. Saudis. That's tough, isn't it? Steve Bruce. Lose the first few games, get fucking beheaded. (laughs) Christ. That's football, they say. Oh, they had a late equaliser. They stole a win. Uh Uh-oh. Fucking bucket full of hands in the dressing room. I love that Steve Bruce is still in charge. He won't be for long. No. He will not be there for long, now. Who are they going to replace him with? Oh, my God. Steve Bruce being executed in Saudi Arabia would be quite an unusual <laughs> pay-per-view, wouldn't it? <laughs> pay-per-view? Yeah. yeah. They'd get fucking Tyson Fury out there, they? <laughs> beat him to a pulp. It's on the undercard. Fury <laughs> <laughs> Joshua. So is that, ha- is that genuinely happening? The... Saudi have changed the name of. Ba- they're like, no, no, it's not the, it's not the government. It's Saudi Arabian government PLC. Yeah, <laughs> it's basically the government are buying Newcastle United. Essentially. It's going to get confirmed today. They're going yeah. to be uh, essentially the most powerful club on the planet. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> wait. And <laughs> pe- people hate Mike Ashley that much. That yeah. they're, they're, they're happy. <laughs> <laughs> that a regime that murders Fucking journalists. zero hours contracts and yeah. sports direct. <laughs> Public beheadings. Ah, yeah. never mind that. It's fucking miles away. What's, what's that? What's that? Is it, what's that? Is, it, is Alan Shearer giving us jip on Match of the Day? Oi, Bin Salman. You know what you do? <laughs> fucking... <laughs> Hey, there is just a matter of time today before you see on Twitter a load of Newcastle fans with full, t- yeah. like, yeah, everything. <laughs> yeah. Outside the strawberry. Yeah. Whoa, it's definitely already happened now. Yeah, it's Two towels around the heads. Yeah. Some knobheads from Fenham have wandered down there. I fucking love a bit of Saudi League. <laughs> um, good luck to you. Good luck. Good luck. The thing will be really spicy because you've got Qatar and you've got Saudi now. I just want, I want Israel to buy Sunderland. <laughs> and then the Tyne Weir derby is getting spicy. You've got fucking Palestinian flags in your way and, and fucking rockets. <laughs> <laughs> Heavens like the Gaza yeah. Strip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those, those Sunderland ultras have fucking brought their A game. <laughs> And the Sunderland would sell. Yeah. It'd sell to the Israelis. Yeah. <laughs> this what the Premier League's just becoming a fucking cold war, isn't it? It's mental. Oh. Yeah, and it's so funny how the fans just are like oh, it doesn't matter. Don't give I mean a I'm fuck. a Chelsea fan, I don't I don't care about any of it. About Abramovich. Ah. Do you love him? Oh, he's got blood in his hands, but fuck it, I don't Do you care. think it's it's my 
you know, I supported Chelsea before when I was a child, so it's my childhood. I can't like, I can't academically not, you know, it's like it's like um, Michael Jackson. It doesn't, it's too good the music. I, I don't, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I can't. He was definitely a wrong one, but beat it's a classic. Well, yeah, and also he, you know, he bought the right tickets <laughs> to those those kids' parties. Oh yeah, he wasn't going through touts. <laughs> no. uh, Face value, children's <laughs> wedding party. Hey, he hosted them. Let's be yeah. honest. He bought a fucking. <laughs> he bought a, like a not a circus theme park. A theme park. Well, he, just, he disguised his house as a, as a theme park. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, there were a few red flags. Yeah, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, but not so, Abramovich, Michael Jackson. I know. All oh, right. Now I knew what was going on. Okay, I thought you said who. No, I was about to ask you who owns Watford. <laughs> no, I thought Elton you John. were going. El- Elton John. Elton John. I thought you were saying who. Who's this? It'd that be funny. Had a theme park. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be I funny? I thought if, it was still. If, uh, I thought it was still Elton John. No, it's not. It's the Pozzo family. Oh, They're Italian. It'd, fu- it'd be funny. They now, if, uh, it'd be funny if Elton John bought fucking Saudi. <laughs> bought like <laughs> Riyadh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I'm fucking buying a city. I yeah. just love. I mean, Elton John's of, done well. He's not done buy Saudi Arabia well. I just love the thought of like all the world's leaders getting together for like a Premier League owners meeting, and Elton John happens to yeah. be <laughs> Saudi Arabia. Like, we don't respect your life choices. Elton. <laughs> you, come, you, you come to Riyadh, I'm throwing you off a building. You understand? <laughs> Where is Elton? We need to have the EPL meeting. <laughs> That's right, Newcastle. Wat- <laughs> Newcastle Watford are now a real grudge match for Newcastle. <laughs> they really want to beat him. <laughs> Poor guys. Yeah. Oh, should, we, should we have a, a short break so I can catch my breath? Do you need a break? Yeah, yeah. Fair dude. Should we put an advert in here? Yeah. Wag wag lids. Hope you're enjoying today's patron exclusive. We've got some new merch that you can see over my boobie. Is this real? This is an ad, this. Oh, for the merch. For the merch that you're wearing. Get one of these ones, but when you buy it, get one that fits you. <laughs> they come in different sizes, but I would definitely maybe order one size up, unless you want to feel like it's a Tammy Girl starter bra. Haveawordpod.com is Have where you get the merch com. from, and it'll save you wearing that pile of shite that you're wearing. Ah, uh, we just said, don't be doing the mean thing. You look like a fucking pedo. Get some merch, but he can't help himself. They just, but look at them. Look through the camera at the fucking scruffy twat on the other side of it. I like you. I think you look good. Fucking pathetic. But you'll look better in Have A Word Pod merch. That's, that's what I was saying, just in a more polite way. And that's here. Because Carlo put the graphic in. Haveawordpod.com. If you can't read. Get on me. So before we do this section, Dan has got some questions. As always, uh, tour date's coming up. You've got Liverpool on the 4th of November, but there's still dates in Salford, Leeds, Bristol, Glasgow, Sheffield, all over the place. Edinburgh, yeah. yeah. FinnTaylor.com. You done London yet? No, London, big one in London, Leicester Square Theatre, 20th of November. Great. Are you doing Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Okay, great. Three nights in the desert. <laughs> Good luck with it. That's sold out. They're sold out, though, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just me f- getting punched in the face by <laughs> Anthony Joshua. <laughs> Sounds like a great name for a yeah, special, yeah. though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Finn Taylor, three nights in the desert. <laughs> It sounds it. like a 12 p.m. Edinburgh play. Yeah. Three nights in the desert. <laughs> no, Three no. nights with a K. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I like it. What? Why are they there? <laughs> Best joke of the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, stand-up question. I think we should. Jack Richardson says, eyelids. So in eyelids. Right, I can set, I can see Finn's a that big is, listener. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, been okay. binging the pod. You're in wrong corner now. Uh, been binging the pod over the past few months, and I think I've seen nearly every public episode. Currently working my way through the Patreons. My question is: When you're sitting down to write a new bit, do you ever find yourself taking it back in the direction of an old bit without even trying to, or? Uh, you end up doing another comedian's bit that you've heard. So, for example, say a musician is trying to come up with a new beat, they may accidentally end up making a beat that already exists. I do this all the time. You think he's a musician. Even without being a musician. 
He's not a musician. <laughs> <laughs> I try to hum a new tune and always end up bringing it back to a tune that already exists. Keep up the good work, Jack. <laughs> so he sits there and for no reason, he's not a musician. He just tries to hum a tune that doesn't exist. He's like, I'm sick of humming other people's music. It's <laughs> surely pretty easy to <laughs> hum a new tune. <laughs> Let's play that funky music, white boy. <laughs> Proving Jack's point. <laughs> and I'm not even a musician. Let me check. No, I'm not. <laughs> Oh no, it's not. It's heartbeat. <laughs> so, what, what is the question? The question is. <laughs> the question is. Sorry. Finn, um, when you write a new bit, yeah, is it? Do I sit there it, humming? No. Is it? Is it? <laughs> do you end up going back to an old bit that hasn't worked in the past, or end up writing a bit like someone else's bit that already exists? Uh, Neither. I try and write a new bit that does, that's my own that doesn't exist. But do you but, ever write a new bit and you're like, oh, an old an old gag will work and then I can take it that way again? And well, yeah. Or you st or you start with an old gag and then you'll see you try and f like two years have passed and you've got some headspace from it and you're like, oh, there's a whole new angle that I've missed at the time. Um, yeah, that's like upcycling your own shit, isn't it? Basically, sort of. Yeah, and. Um, uh, but I, I never really, and sometimes you go back to old bits because you haven't done for ages and you're like, oh, I really like this joke. So Mate, I've, I've literally just done that recently yeah. and it feels like you're like, wow, amazing. I've got new stuff. You're like, no, dickhead, you've yeah. just brushed off a classic. But it feels new. Like yeah. I, I only just watched back, or I, I, had that, I didn't have the clip or whatever, but I watched back my Apollo set in full and I didn't realise some of the jokes I'd done there. And I was like, fuck, I wish I was, could still do those now. I really, <laughs> I really like doing those. Um, but no, I don't. Do you sit and write? Are you a writer no. or are you just a notebook? Or do you just... It's it's basically, especially now, my time is so compressed because of the kid. I get in the car and I have about 20 minutes when I drive to a tube station. Because fuck you, Greta. <laughs> and um, I, that's when I basically talk to myself in like trying to come out with a, a bit or a couple of jokes or tags or whatever. And then I try it out. And then it, if they give me a laugh and I've got space, I see if I can get something else out. Talking yourself in the car is makes you feel mental, but is one of the better ways to get ready to try a new bit on, on stage. I think you have to talk it out. Cause it, I mean, it sounds, even if it's a joke that's like you've written down or, or that has to be worded correctly, if you're, you have to word it correctly conversationally because that's how you're going to say it. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't write anything word for word. We, no. We've we've covered our writing processes a lot, but I just can't. If often like someone will go, oh, you did that different last time I seen you. I'm like, yeah, I probably did it different the very next night because it's just although it's got the certain bits that have to be in a certain rhythm every night it's different because I want it to sound like it's the first time I've said it. But there's also there's a rhythm that you read at. It's different to the rhythm that you speak at. Yeah, and it's. Reading something is can be funny in a way that saying it isn't, and vice versa. Yeah. Oh, like, running through something in your head, you feel like I've definitely got this, and, you and then and you say it, it out loud. And you're, and you're like, like wow, no. yeah. I was saying this so much better in my head. Yeah. When you actually voice something out, it's because in your head you're Cat Williams. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Uh, I don't know what Cat Williams sounds like, but I was I was going for a. Black American mentalist. Was he, that he right? Is. Yeah. I The only way I can say in his voice, and I ca probably can't even do that, is Jacksonville because of that special that he opens with. Where he just loads of 25 local. minutes at the start of his special. All ends with, and that's why it's like in Jacksonville <laughs> for 25 minutes. It's <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> I think. It goes out worldwide, and there's like one city in one state that can understand the half first an hour half local. of it. Love it. Are the there balls any... on that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to sell very well. <laughs> in Jacksonville. Uh, are there any comics that when you watch them or gig with them, it, it gets your sort of creative juices flowing? Because I, I watch some comics and I'm like, that's so good, it just makes me laugh like a punter. And then there's other comics who aren't, any worse they're just there's something about some comics that gets you going like fuck I've got I want to do a bit I like I don't know just makes you want to create your own stuff there's some, there's sometimes you watch a comic do a pre or do a bit about a topic and then you watch while you're watching them you get an idea for a premise and then you're sweating hoping they don't touch your premise 100% because otherwise you've nicked it 
but you have thought of it yourself. It's just that you're watching someone talk about something and just something sparks something. But um, I used to watch a lot of Norm MacDonald and that would always spark, I know, the best, but uh, that would always spark, just the, the that would always spark something. And Sean, actually Sean Locke as well. Who, they were both very similar. Yeah. It's weird they died so close together, isn't it? But um, Had that weird sort of just off the cut, like just a really, slightly yeah. left of kilter. Yeah. Um, uh, who else? Yeah, there, there, there definitely. Or I just recently I went off stand up for a bit. Just watch. I couldn't watch it. I think I was doing so much of it. But then after the pandemic, I'm now I'm just especially doing night feeds. I'm just watching everything, and uh, just watching anyone do it just just gets you gets you going. Watching anyone do it brilliantly kicks me off. Like if I watch someone, even it doesn't have to be a Netflix special or an Apollo oh, okay. set. Or if I'm watching someone in a club, if I'm on second or third or whatever, and I'm either following or I'm being followed by someone, and they just destroy it, I, I'm just like I need to just. It's great. It, it, I just need to be a bit better because I, I'm so com- I still love it, and I'm not like jealous of them, but it makes me competitive in a quite healthy way. I think I'm I, like, I just want to be better. I love it when you go into a, say you're closing somewhere and then there's like the, the, there's a guy in the middle spot someone in the model, middle spot who just roofs it yeah. and is really good and you've never heard of them you're like oh fuck okay i yeah. can't like oh i'll try that new bit off the top you're like oh shit okay. you've got a roof yeah and i, I really like that because I'm, um, I'm better on a better bill like last week the the comedy store have a weekly gig in manchester at the minute on a tuesday at fright island and i was closing and there's no break between the second act and the closer and the, the second act was Brennan Reese, who is a mank in Manchester, doing the first half of the break spot. Yeah, and, one of your best mates and in the and mood to make it. one of your best mates. And he just twatted it. Mm. And I'm sat there actually watching the match, but also going, I've got to... You, you've got to you, be better. And you, ne- you never want to be the best act on the bill, really, do you? Otherwise, you're doing the wrong gigs. Like, it's always good to, to be... No, he always wants to be. No, I, I, I want to be you the want best to do the, the bill, but at the end... You want to do the best. Yeah, that's what I mean. You want to do the best. You don't want to see the lineup through and go, oh, fuck, I'm not... I'm oh, not, I see I'm what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. You want to do the best, but you don't want to be the... Be obviously on obviously the, the, on the poster. That's what I mean. Like, what the fuck's he doing at that gig? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Who, who would you pay to, to watch do stand-up? Like... That, uh, don't like, ask me that. I'm going to lose a lot of friends. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, I keep Sean, seeing retweets about Rick, Ricky Gervais, and it makes me go, I'd actually like to go and watch Ricky Gervais. Well, you, I was going to say Sean McLaughlin, who's his opener. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to go and see? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I, I haven't watched any of Ricky Gervais's stuff apart from the first two hours he did back in the day. Animals and politics. Yeah. Um, which were great. Uh, I just haven't got around to watching the other stuff. But Sean McLaughlin, his opener is good friend of mine and i think one of the most criminally underrated yeah I and mean, he's phenomenal comic. he's very 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 good he can make stuff that's really like unsexy very funny to everyone like yeah. he did a whole show about like um the dark side of facebook and came down hail mary yeah and it was phenomenal it was like, one it was of the really best shows funny. i've ever seen he's brilliant um very different but ninia benjamin i could watch just pure filth she's phenomenal um, when I, I, say, I, when I say I could watch, I mean I could watch for ages. I don't just mean I could watch them. <laughs> um, I mean I like, yeah, I like Bobby Mayer's great, but he always comes up with something you won't think. You know, he always surprises you with where he goes. I think the American comics are the ones that always come to mind because we don't, because you can't see them over here very often. Well, yeah, that's, I want to see Tim Dillon. I want to see Schultz. Yeah, but any anyone. American who isn't super famous because if they're super famous you might want to see them anyway because they're super famous and why would you not want to go and watch someone who can sell 5,000 tickets I get that but the Americans who we know of are they must be doing something right for us to have heard of them sort of yeah, thing yeah. what was great when I, I did Montreal and there were all these Americans that I'd never heard of but they're all phenomenal because they're yeah. just about to get to yeah. a level where we might hear of them they're just doing that New York circuit and rising yeah, to the top of it the, or LA yeah, yeah. great yeah, the were they support? Were, were you on a package bill? I'm fascinated by Montreal because we obviously know Edinburgh in and out. Oh, Montreal's great because it's just like gigs and there's no art, you know, no one's, you don't have to put any artifice over your hour and like any kind of narrative 
Or like little bow. You just spot. You, you just do spots, or you just do your funniest forty-five out minutes, or your funniest hour, like you would like you would do here on a tour. Theatres, clubs, is it all what? sort of yeah, like all, all of over the city? Yeah, and then um, so I was doing the British show. And it was me, Jamali, Sarah Millican, Jimmy Carr, and then I also did because I did, I did the first series of roast battle here when they had Jeff Ross, who's the roast master. Yeah, they had him on the series. Um, but they, he, he would give you feedback. He'd give everyone feedback after the battles, but then they just cut him out of the final edit. So Jeff Ross is just in the audience for all these uh, records. <laughs> roast and then isn't used. So Comedy Central over here decided that no one knew who Jeff Ross was and he and wasn't cut, necessary. Yeah, was, so, but anyway, he asked me to do the, like, the roast master, the roast, the, it's like they have like a World Series. Like, where, so me and Jimmy were the British team. Um, so so I did loads of a roast here, Matt. Just, just, do, just did loads of roasts against like, people I'd never heard of um but I got I think I got to the semi-final because they were just like American comics are so they're so like I, I'm this identity which for roasting is just so easy so yeah. I was getting on the plane not knowing who my first opponent was and I got a thing through saying she's a Palestinian lesbian married to a Jew and I was like Mwah. Fine. <laughs> easy <laughs> um, and she lives in the northeast of England yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She owns Middlesbrough FC. So. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. Um, I'm now trying to think of what the jokes I did, but it was three years ago or something. Who did you roast on the British show? Paul Chowdhury. Rather, of rather, rather, in, rather infamously. Yeah. The. Hmm. Uh, is this where's this bit going out? Everywhere. Okay, fine. We can cut it though if you. Well, he look. I I don't think I don't think he. Most of the roast battles in the British version, they um, <laughs> people know who they're roasting. <laughs> they know the person. They and they maybe they write it together. Yeah, you've have you guys done it? I did That's it with Maisie Adam. And did you did you run? Did you? Did, uh, no. So you, you've worked with Maisie before. You know, I'd Maisie. worked with Maisie twice. Right. And in the build up to it, like roast battle said, oh, we want you to do it, Adam. Who do you know? So That's I was it. sending them yeah. people every week going. Brennan Reese, because they were like, we needed to have like a connection. I was like, well, Liverpool versus Manchester. And then it was like, this other guy and this other guy and whatever. And then they were like, we, mm, it needs to be a stronger connection than this. And then I got a phone call and they're going, you've been confirmed for roast battle against that girl you've met twice. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's a bit fucking annoying. But I'm, so she was, she happened to be in my sketch on the stand up sketch show. Right. Uh, like, and we were filming the sketch of that like three days after we got confirmed. So we just sat down and we're like, is there anything you don't want me to talk about? And is there anything you don't want me to talk about? And I'd, I'd already written a load of stuff by now because mm. I'd be, you get something like a fact sheet, don't you, yeah. about the person you, you're roasting. And sort of the most interesting thing about Maisie, I was told I wasn't allowed, not that I'm saying Maisie's not interesting, but the, the thing that you would go, I'm going to write about that. Yeah. I was told, you, she said, I don't want that spoke about at all. It's a big, uh, uh, it's a big reveal in me tour. Don't talk about that. Right. Yeah. See, yeah, so the point I was making is that mo you at least sit down with them. I I didn't, I hadn't met Paul. Yeah. We met when we were getting mic'd up to go on. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, he, he, not, he didn't know who I was. It was my first, my first ever TV thing. Yeah. And so I don't think he was expecting, you know, I don't think he was expecting what came out. Um, <laughs> what and he came got, out, Phil? Well, he... <laughs> I, I think my vague line of attack was, I know you can sell more tickets than me, but ultimately I'm white, so my life is better than yours. <laughs> and I had a big old list of things I can do that he can't, such as running through an airport with a backpack on or whatever. And um, <laughs> yeah, he lost the battle and, um, and then his manager tried to stop it getting aired. So I then went in and filmed another one against Carl Donnelly because Comedy Central were like, well, we want you to be on it. And I think it was probably just leveraging control of the edit, I think. Yeah. But um, no, it was quite spicy. But then I've... <laughs> what's great is the, I got to write... You get When you get to write jokes for pairs and you can just insult everyone. <laughs> and you don't have to say it. Like I wrote... After Montreal, I got a writing gig for um, the roast of Alec Baldwin on Comedy Central. And I was doing it for Nikki Glaser... You wrote for Nikki Glaser. Brilliant comic. She's a great roast as well. Amazing, amazing comic. But she, um, 
I don't know if any of my jokes made the edit. I know she said some of them on stage, but I think Caitlyn Jenner was on the, on the platform. And uh, yeah, so the only thing she didn't want mentioned was the fact that she killed the woman <laughs> with her car. <laughs> and that was obviously the only thing I wrote jokes about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the American, ro the American roast... You get to just rip the shit out of the whole panel. Yeah, because they come and up. And then the person. Yeah, they come up and they go, oh, uh, Caitlyn Jenner is here. And then you say, oh, she's an inspiration to men who want to be boys, boys who want to be girls, and old middle-aged women who want to be fucking tarmac. That was, joke. That, was my, that was my joke that didn't get <laughs> But, uh... <laughs> um, <laughs> weirdly, that, weirdly, that got cut. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah so so they but they go through everyone and then they do like two or three minutes on the actual person who's being roasted because on the uk one it's basically like you versus you and then these people decide yeah, because over good. here it's roast battle which right. is what it's they do in the comedy store in la it's you versus you over it's the roast of dan nightingale with they did try it panel. they did they did it over here in like the mid 2000s they jimmy tried to get a do you remember and the, when Sean Locke died, there was clips of him roasting Bruce Forsyth. It's just that British audiences, mainstream audiences, just didn't really, never oh, really went for it. Bruce, yeah. it was too, yeah. Brucey. It's because we hold people up um, in a way that's different to the Yeah, US. you've got to do that when they're sort of like a bit of, in a bit of trouble. Got to do that, like, got to roast Ant from Ant and Dec, like, two weeks after he crashed his car. Yeah, and why is he going to go on that? Like, that's yeah, an exactly. insane, like, and, and no, listen, how are the stitches? Not good? <laughs> well, guess what? You've got another gig. Have you heard of Finn Taylor? Well, he's going to ruin your week. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it's more, I think it's more that, like, in the US, they, um, they just, they're more, it's more of a compliment to rip the shit out of someone. It's been going on since the 50s, yeah. hasn't it? And like, over here, it's just, we, we, we all think that stuff, but we think it privately, all very passive aggressive. And so when you, no one actually says it because they think you mean it and it's not, but it, maybe it's changing with younger audiences because they love it. I mean, people love Rose Battle. They do, but I don't know whether it's coming back. Like I'm not no, announcing anything here, but when Comedy Central got bought, like the series I did, they were, the lawyers were a lot more like, mm. don't say that, oh. change that bit. I got a commission retracted when Comedy Central got bought. <laughs> I did an internet. I did an internet show where I just did vox pops, trying to piss different people off. In I the street. fucking love that series. It's yeah. called Bullshit Bingo. <laughs> oh, and we yeah, got man. a second series commissioned, and then it got bought. And they were like, "Have some money and don't make any more." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh, fine, <laughs> perfect." But uh, that's a shame because yeah, but they just wanted they just wanted to make do reruns of Friends, which is just a shame. But it's good though, isn't it, Friends? Friends, because you know the characters yeah. and the script. <laughs> Because you've watched it. <laughs> Let's have a have a word. <laughs> Got to do some have a words. What did you press it first? The screen. Well, because it because <laughs> I, I felt like it was a real left turn. Yeah. Uh, so, Finn, we try and solve people's problems, uh, or just sort of enable them to have a good old whinge about something. Before yeah. we start, uh, Keely Cookson has said, hi, long time listener, first time messaging. I need to know if you've ever had any feedback from your have a word section. Some of the ones you've discussed, I feel like we need closure on them. I need to know whose advice they went with and what the outcome was. You had one a couple of weeks ago where a, where a girl wrote in about her brother and how he was stalking his work colleague. Um, same with the girl whose boyfriend was clearly gaslighting her a couple of episodes ago, and you all told her to ditch him, which was sound advice, but I would like to know what she decided to do. Is there any way you can put in a, a feature and ask those that uh, you've given advice to let you know what the outcome was? Um, sorry for the long message. Keep up the good work. That's from Keely. We would... Really, really good suggestion, I think. It, yeah, we would. We I very rarely... Because I do all the interaction and the have a words, I very rarely get any feedback about what sometimes I do, but uh, particularly in those cases, if you want to just write back in and let us know if it's pod worthy, we'll, uh, we'll air them. However, I love that Keely's like, yeah, yeah, this is all very funny, but I need to know what the fuck happened. Nice level of control but also, freak. But that, you could then start being a sort of vigilante podcast where you're hunting down people who are stalking. That's another branch of the company. Oh, have a yeah. word, Peter Fowlances. Don't give him ideas. Right. <laughs> There's only so much budget, Finn. Um, yeah, I get, like... <laughs> what budget do you need for that? Uh, what? Cold cases with Adam Rowe. <laughs> are, you jo are you joking? <laughs> if he becomes a paedophile hunter, he'll have a pedo hunter van. It'll be orange and blue. 
The fucking, where's the pedo question mark? The See, decal will cost eight grand. <laughs> like I've had to put it through last thing is, You can't hunt pedos in an unbranded van. <laughs> Fact. Are you stupid, Dan? That's how it works, branding. Pedo hunter branding. We've been trying to get the lads more hours. What if we just get them to do it? Be the pedophiles. <laughs> You, you know what I, I meant. know what you mean. You, I meant get them to hunt them. Yeah, I know you know as well. And paint the van. You wouldn't want you wouldn't want a branded van when you're on the hunt though, would you? Yeah, that's actually yeah. You want a camouflage van? No, double bluff. <laughs> get a bell like an ice cream van. <laughs> Looking for pedos, pedos. <laughs> Let, play a little song like the scrap metal fella. Yeah, pedos. Bring, Bring your pedos <laughs> out. <laughs> Go and get your pedos out. Graham, get out of the garage. <laughs> and you can have that radiator. What would be the song to get the pedos out? Well, who let the pedos out by the Baha Man? The original remix. I don't think it is ex- <laughs> by the Baha Man. I was thinking Michael Jackson. No, no, I wasn't. It's not. It's <laughs> read the first time. Want girls, 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 and boys. Uh, Dan Johnson says, young lad called Daniel Johnson, emailing for the Two first in one time. Episode, yeah. I don't give a shit. He sends such good emails. Eyelids, quick one, but a straight up one. Have a word. Please, could you have a word with people who do fun shit for charity and want you to pay for it? Jamie in the office is doing a skydive for charity and would appreciate if everyone gave a donation. Then in brackets, it says something stupid like, recommended donation, £20. Insanity. The only way I'd ever agree to pay that is if it came came with a guarantee they would do it with a broken parachute. Are they good people for making money for charity or are they, as I believe, total bellends who deserve to be shat on by a bird? Nice one, Dan J. So, uh, he wants us to have a word with the very conspicuous, I'm doing something for charity, guys. It is, it's annoying because they, don't, they often don't have a correlation. In that, you know, you think, oh, I'm running the London Marathon dressed as a Yorkshire pudding to raise money for cancer research. <laughs> and you think, well, that only makes sense if someone you know is having chemo dressed as a Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's got no link otherwise. If they're fucking there, big old thing and the tube going in. <laughs> wasting away in the middle of this big pudding costume. <laughs> fair point. Do you know what I mean? That's what you I mean. want a correlation. Make you want a link. link. <laughs> you want a link. Yeah. If you if you're running for cancer research, lose some fucking weight. <laughs> before you get Get on the field. <laughs> yeah. So, like, tr- raising money for someone who, like, I don't know, fell out of a helicopter or something. So you're doing, like, a sponsored bounce at a parachute place, uh, a, a trampoline place. You want it to you want it to marry up? Well, yeah. Okay. So, like, a diabetes. I, like, so the worst online. thing I could ever... Terrible <laughs> examples by me, by the way. <laughs> Diabetes! I just... I, I was, in my head, I was like, come on, Dan, you can do it. A mum that fell out of a fucking... <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Sorry. You, Finn gave you a good line. What? For the diabetes one. What? Run, it, run it on one leg. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. There you go. I've seen him on tour in Liverpool in November, is that? Fourth of November. Um, the, so the worst thing I could possibly... I think if you're going to do something for charity, it has to be something... You either, you really don't want to do. Mm. That's why you're raising money. It's got to be, I'll do this if you sort that charity out. So the worst thing I could ever do for me is a skydive. I fucking do not want to do it. Really? I I don't want to kill anyone. I'd rather kill someone really? than do a skydive. For charity. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to do a sponsored not Mur- killing murder. anyone? <laughs> <laughs> I do a sponsored murder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A you- sponsored murder. Yeah. <laughs> Just to raise money for uh, murder victims. Finn, I'm telling you right now, I'll give you 20 quid. Yeah. <laughs> Name your target. Yeah. I wonder at what point that becomes like the right thing to do. Like, let's say they go, right, we've got all these kids who are dying. It cost us 100 grand each to save them. If he raises 200 grand and then just kills one kid, he's in profit of kids' lives. <laughs> yeah. It's, I love your reasoning. When did you join the Conservative Party? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that more socialist for for the many, not the few? <laughs> it's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> save the many, kill the few. So would you kill one child to save ten? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you explain it to them? Tricky chatting it. I'd probably 
not do that on the podcast. You'd do it with a children's book, wouldn't you? Why are you, why are you, why are you explaining it to them? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking back of the head. Before they die. But why is it my time to die? You're shot in the head, John. <laughs> John. <laughs> John, the, John the ill child. John baby. No, oh. you, this child's not ill. Oh, what? Kill a, well, I suppose it's better to kill a sick one. I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Better. <laughs> this is better. Anyway, you don't like skydiving. <laughs> Thanks, Finn. <laughs> oh, my job. Do you want a job as a producer? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, that would be the worst thing I could do. So, yeah, that would be... But I do think some people just really want to go skydiving. Oh, you're, you're absolutely yeah. and then, spot on. <laughs> and then they go, oh, I'll do it for... I'm going to do a Tough Mudder because I want to be doing a Tough Mudder, but I'm going to do it for charity. Yeah. yeah. But then again, they are just raising money for charity, aren't they, at the end of the so day? So what would you do? Like, what's the worst thing you can think of? I would do... Uh, like, for you? If someone's mum fell out of a helicopter, I would do a sponsored trampoline. Anyone? <laughs> I just thought it was worth a second go. The, the and it is, turns out it's still shit the second yeah. time. No, I'm joking. The thing is, it's just, it, it, you, have, you have to do something because people giving to charity, just doing it, people don't do it, do they? Or they, do, they don't do it in large amounts. Yeah. So you Any have to excuse. do something wacky to make it interesting. I think yeah. Adam's got a point. It should be something unenjoyable because you yeah. know all those people running the marathon. They, they, they love be. jogging. Yeah. Does it have to be unenjoyable? They still get the money either way. Yeah, no, it should be. Are you making punish? Why? Why? But what difference does it make? Because you, you're paying for someone to you're go not through. Paying so them, you're still giving to charity. Yeah, but they could just give to charity anyway. Yeah, but they can't just ask you to give money to them to give to charity. Exactly. So it should be sort of unenjoyable. Yeah. A charity public ass fisting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's the public. It's the worst. Bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do that shit privately. Exactly. But. <laughs> I don't need no sponsor. <laughs> I mean, I'm a Watford fan. It's yeah. every home game. <laughs> Middle of Liverpool. Just getting right in the ass. Middle just, of Liverpool. And there's just an app next to you. You put a bit of... Liverpool in. one. Just near the Nando's. They've got that little <laughs> amphitheatre bit. Uh, Albert Dock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lost its heritage site, so fucking put an arse fisting competition in. That'll competition. get it back. That'll get it back. <laughs> well, are you the fisting or the fisting? Yeah. <laughs> what you can take or what you can give. Yeah, it's exactly. progressively bigger hands. Yeah. <laughs> Which one you can take. Like rub fucking those uh, ice hockey fingers. <laughs> arse fisting competition. And then... I, look, all I'm saying is, I don't want to be publicly arse fisted. So no, you're going to you're gonna have to give some money to save the spotted owl if you do want you know, that to happen. I think there's a lot of Everton fans could really do some good for charity. <laughs> <laughs> Once you announce this, <laughs> the whole of Goodison will be a buzz with fist in his ass. What? What fist in your ass? You'd love to do that. No, but they, <laughs> but they'd give the money to make it happen, Carl. Yeah, and the point is, you're not enjoying it. You're doing it for I'd charity. Pay not to fist his ass. There you go. So you're right, double charity money. Yeah. Because they're paying for you to do the fist. In his ass. I don't like this right got, now. You've got to pay. <laughs> you've got to pay more to not do it. Yeah. Happen. And the only winner here is the sick kids of Liverpool. Charity. There you go. <laughs> I mean, one of them's dead. <laughs> Also, when you're like, oh, I don't want a present for my birthday. I just want you to donate to this charity. I was like, I was giving you fuck all, mate. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I agree with Dan. Yeah. What was the last thing you did for charity? Oh, probably a gig where I did new material. <laughs> <laughs> That's the weird thing is when comics do charity gigs, they always do new stuff. Which is bizarre, isn't it? Because that's like Freddie Mercury coming on at Live Aid with a fucking tuba and going, <laughs> see if this works. <laughs> <You know. laughs> it doesn't make any... It's so shitty, obviously. Live, Live Aid wouldn't be as, as legendary if he'd come out with the notebook. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do Radio Gaga. Yeah, Never yeah. mind that. I'm not getting paid. Is this the... Uh, 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 uh. Have you ever done anything for charity, though? Exactly. Not gigs, though. Exactly like Finn. I'm like, would you give up your Wednesday evening to come and do a charity night at the Frog? And you're like, really magnanimous. I would. I will. Um, I did a sponsored silence when I was in um, probably year five of primary school. Um, How long? I tried. I think I raised about six quid and lasted 25 minutes. It's complete fucking failure. Just was an attention seeking little shit. And I want to take in a sign saying, uh, I'm on a sponsored silence. And the teacher's like, little fucking bell end, and tried to let me do it. And I still fucked it up. About 25 minutes, and it was like, nah, it's boring, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Africa. <laughs> In that voice. <laughs> Cigarette. Fuck Africa. Fuck you know. <laughs> Sponsored silence. It's going to be a you? podcaster one day. Fuck <laughs> you, that. Have you had them? Have you ever done anything for charity? 
I don't think you are. Um, you? Except for gigs. Done a few gigs. Yeah. <laughs> some comedians. That, no, no, I have done some gigs that I'd have done anyway. Did a sponsored unicycle ride. Oh, yeah. Oh, of yeah. 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 When was that? <laughs> Brighton to Dundee, it was. When was that? Brighton to Dundee. Yeah. All oh, right. You had to get the unicycle down to Brighton on the train. Not a unicycle. Penny farthing. Oh, penny farthing. <laughs> I was about to go bullshit. <laughs> I'd love to see you try and get on a penny farthing for charity. Those Especially old... after being publicly fisted. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big climb. Oh, that, that's two separate days. <laughs> What's that a penny farthing? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. Stop trying to make your bullshit believable. Cal, two seconds. What's that a penny farthing? It wasn't. It was, at, um, it was a skateboard, wasn't it? Um, I signed up <laughs> to Tough Mother for Charity. We did Tough Mother for Charity, me and today. I signed up to Tough Mother for Charity and then uh, raised a load of money and then didn't do it. <laughs> There you go. That's it. I remember that. <laughs> Mr. Rowe, Mr. Rowe, where's the charity money? <coughs> Tough mother. No, I gave them, I, they got the money. Right. I collected the money and then didn't do Tough that, Mother. That is the most altruistic thing I've ever heard. Because <laughs> he's not he's not trying to get everyone going, oh why you did a tough mother. I wanna I don't want I don't want to get in shape. I just want, you know, to help fucking leukemia or whatever. Yeah. Super. How much did you raise? A few grand. Wow. It was a guru. That's like a, Smith and Blair. Yeah. That's, oh. a lot, that's a lot of shareholders that aren't very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Asking for the money back. Yeah. But that's the thing, isn't it? They wouldn't. They so can't ask for yeah. it back. Yeah. Oh, I'm not doing tough money. Oh, we're giving me fucking 200 quid. Right. Then. Unplug a dialysis. Sorry, <laughs> mate. <laughs> he didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know your minutes from Fader. Unplug it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one more. Oh, I. Uh, wag wag, you legends. Not sure if you if you should have a word with me or my missus, but hey ho, I've got two kids under eighteen months, and since the second, Oof. <laughs> since the second was born, penetrative sex is happening a little less often. Yeah, um, which is understandable as it's uh, only a few weeks since birth, eight weeks since birth. Sorry. However, she appears to be highly motivated to <laughs> smoke a de donut with the face. Smoke a donut. Bum hole. Smoke a bum hole. Lick his bum hole. He wants to, oh, okay. Right. So, I've, do you want to know the title of the email? Because I make up the title. How much rimming is too much? That's what I've called this. <laughs> Smoke a de donut with de face. I'm sure you think that's great. But it's at, that, it's at the point where she rarely wants sex. She would rather just... <laughs> Specified position <laughs> on your side, like your she's side. changing the baby's nappy. She would put rather put me in a specified position. You never get on your side to get your bum all licked. Uh, I'm just being silly, Adam. Stop <laughs> ruining my buzz. Put me in a specified position. <laughs> Thanks for telling us that you never get a side rim, fucking amateur. Um, uh, and rim me until I'm done. She's done or he's done. Until he's done, she's done. Can you rip? Can you rim someone to, pe- to, to completion? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's been on the uh, London to Runcorn direct. <laughs> Those businessmen don't fuck about. I I have been rimmed by a children's TV presenter that I can't name, obviously. But she's now. How uh, old were you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that he did fix it. <laughs> um, uh, can you tell us the show? Uh, I don't watch. Uh, I don't watch it, so I don't know. But she's gone on to great things. But uh, no, I've had a few. I've had a few. I, I I don't think you can ever do too much. I think it's good. I th- especially you know I, I'm in that period of uh, in the immediate after. Yeah, it's a weird time. Of in course, sex life. Yeah, the shower's getting a lot of it at the moment. Yeah, from my end. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the weird thing. Expecting your second with the plug hole. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the weird thing. Is that like. You know, you ejaculate, and you know, ninety time, ninety percent of the time, it's just to de-stress. Maybe five percent of the time, it's because you want to want to want to do it, and then you know, zero point one percent is created a human. <laughs> it's a bit of a head fuck, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, what was my point? <laughs> oh, rimming. Yeah. <laughs> no. I remember the first time I was r- she rimmed. She she was Scottish, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you know. 
when uh, when, you, when you're fucking uh, when you're starting the day with a battered haggis. <laughs> Yeah. And arsehole is a fucking uh, five a day, isn't it? Um, <laughs> where you get Could you vi- still feel the fizz of your... iron brew on her tongue? Well, yeah. <laughs> She's got to get her vitamins somehow. You know, but, um, <laughs> not getting much sunlight up there. <laughs> or up there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, you know, I think it's. I think you find something that, that just takes the edge off that first eight weeks. I mean, my question is, where's the baby? It's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. You're not meant to leave. The, you're not meant to leave them um, because you know having sex with a baby in a Moses basket next to you is sort of a kind of in a weird way kind of a beautiful thing. But <laughs> ribbing, <laughs> ribbing your husband. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That feels weird. <laughs> she sounds like an absolute trooper. She's like, obviously, I'm eight weeks postpartum, mm. and that comes with as we discussed earlier. It's a f- there's it's a, a lot, going, lot on, going on. But she's like, obviously, she's probably got a Westbrook bemo. I'm not just gonna. <laughs> I'm not just gonna send you to the spare room. You know, that's I'm she, a that's trooper. What, that's what she calls her asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Get on the couch, love. <laughs> well, why straight to women? There's other things she can do. Well, that's the. Well, no, maybe she the, likes the, doing it. Well, no, well, because the, but the breasts are out of action as well. Because that's the thing is that when you're a, a woman who's breastfeeding, they're not they're not sexual when you when you're breastfeeding. I'm well. Right? So and then I beg to differ for the woman. I mean, oh, okay. <laughs> but then, then there's that's out of yeah, you know. Course. You've got two demilitarized zones, yeah. <laughs> and then the only fucking active trench is the uh, yeah trench. But then not <laughs> u- the trench. not usually his trench. Anyway, can that's, we finish the, the email? That's the funny at first, <laughs> at first it was great. Uh, um, sorry, at first it was great, but some days she has done it twice. And it's starting to just become a bit strange. To add that, we were having conventional sex last night, and halfway through, she says, uh, would I ever do pegging? I'm open-minded, but I draw the line at anything going in the bum-bum. Shall I be a warrior and take one for the team, or shall I put a stop to this backdoor voyage <laughs> Voyage, and talk to her about it? I feel like instead of asking to peg me, she's built me up by rig- rimming me all the time. That's from anonymous, obviously. That's no. So, so we've talked about Peggy a lot, mm. but postpartum there seems to be her, she's. And fascinated. he's allowed to draw that line just because you want your windows clean. It doesn't mean you want to break through them. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, chef's guess. Don't really think I can top that. <laughs> <laughs> Has the second kid turned her lesbian? Is that, does that ever happen? She sounds like she wants to get active, doesn't she, with other. Just enjoy it twice a day as well. Brush your teeth while she's doing it. Two beds, one stone. Yeah, do it. Do it before you brush your teeth. Add it into your routine. Yeah. Bit, of, bit of porridge. What's the position as well? Is it all fours? Is He's on, on his back with his legs, like you know, like that picture of. You no, know, I know what it is, but I'm trying to work out what. His feet. Oh what no, he's got to be in a different position. Shot. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's got to be in a different position than that. That's too much like a nappy change, isn't it? Legs in the air, wet wipe. <laughs> no. Have you ever been rimmed? Find out on Patreon. Um, <laughs> um, Should you do with your legs? Because on your side, what you said before is absolute insanity. Because that's, that's cl- exam. That closes. Mm, never lying down for the rim rim. All fours. Yeah, I'm lying down on me back with me. I'm face down in a paddling pool. The old Barrymore. Yeah. <laughs> Over you can't the lick someone's ass in a swimming pool. Barrymore, <laughs> Barrymore's in your island there as well. Ever had a ever had a fucking pool noodle? Wrap them round, get them floating. <laughs> <laughs> Fill them with armbands <laughs> and ruin a kid's party. Um, I don't no no sort of a little bit no I not really. I, I'm not, you know. I don't think anyone needs to have a word with anyone. I think, I think, you know, let's not let's not kink shame a postpartum woman. I think it's an unusual I, thing. I think he's every right to be like, it's freaking me out a bit, guys. What's happening? Well, look, you know, hormones and stuff. They do all kinds of crazy shit in the first few weeks. I mean, this is the first I've heard of. Yeah. You know, constant. Yeah. By daily rimming. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Postnatal depression's a motherfucker. Hey. But she got hungry. But I will. I will be suggesting it when I get home. Like she could be doing much. She could have much worse of a a, a tick. Let's call it 
as yeah. a result of having the baby. There's many other things she could be doing yeah. that would be a massive inconvenience for him that he would have to just accept and be like, she's just had me baby. I need to just yeah. let her be a fucking knob for My wife's bit. not loading the dishwasher at the moment. Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> if she was having the temerity to rim me twice a day, I think I'd probably put it, fucking put up with it <laughs> at the very least. I think, I think two rims a day is too much. I think once in a while you're like, oh, bit fun. Like when you're on the 14th time in a week, like it's clean enough. Surely you're taking Sunday off. Have some respect, <laughs> God's sake. The Lord's Day, the Shabbat. <laughs> I, I think he should just be very grateful. Especially if you're orthodox, actually. You can't use toilet paper on Sundays, can you? So you're definitely not. Oh, my God, not. yeah. She's helping out. Do Jews rim on Sundays? That's, that's the name of my new podcast. <laughs> that's coming out exclusively on Squawk Box. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> I don't know where you, you, know where you host things. I don't Kicking off. Squawk, Squawk Box. Squawk Box doing well, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, just enjoy yourself, lad, because it's not going to last forever. And I guarantee you what will happen is you'll get about nine months down the line and she won't have done it for a couple of weeks. And you'll be like... Left yeah. me arse, she'll be like, oh, no. Also, you'll be saving money on toilet paper. Yes. And by then, she'll have left you for a woman called Linda <laughs> with an undercut, so you'll be all right. <laughs> just fart once. That'll put an end to it. Uh, if you do want it to stop, you can just do that. <laughs> just one me. <laughs> Has a woman ever farted on you while you've been down there? I don't even mean on her arsehole, but like on her. Yes. A lady fart? Or a, a oh, fart? A mole fart. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean... You know, it's the cost of battle, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No war without casualties. <laughs> <laughs> that's my, my word, this pink eye. I think we're done, aren't we? I think so. I think that's the end of this week's episode. I would call that the finish. There's some merch available at halfwaypod.com. It's my favourite merch we ever put out. It's the only one that I actually really enjoy wearing. And this so. one's from Sainsbury's. Um... Patreon.com slash have word pod gets you early access to these episodes and it gets you a bonus episode every single week and about once a month, roughly, where you do something else as well. You get a little bonus thing. Um, there's secret... Oh, no, there isn't secret something's on sale because that is secret. <laughs> but, if, <laughs> uh, the, but there's a lot of reasons to be on the Patreon. It's not just the extra episodes. It's not just the discounts on merch and the early releases. We're announcing live tickets on there before anyone. If anyone's like, well, I don't, I don't care about the discounts. Things are being announced on Patreon and selling out before they're even on the public episodes. Wise up. Sunday the 19th of December, we're going to be doing a live show in Liverpool at Hot Water Comedy Club. There's only going to be 200 tickets to be in the room, and the rest is going to be on pay-per-view. Uh, that will go on sale at the end of November. The tickets will go out to Patreons first. £10 will get priority, then 5 then 3 And they'll prob- the 200 tickets in the room will probably sell out uh, to the £10, I would imagine. So just make sure you sign up at patreon.com slash haveawaypod if you want to be in the room. And if not, mark the 19th of December in your diaries for that live stream because that will be a wild night. We've got our guests confirmed. They're two absolute heavyweights, people you're going to love to see again. Adam's public fisting. The tickets for that <laughs> will be available only on Patreons. My tour goes on sale at the end of October. Keep an eye out for that. That will go on Patreon first as well. Finn, uh, where can we find you? FinnTaylor.com. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram because I just never did and now it's too late, but I might. YouTube channel. I'm putting, I'm putting loads of clips up on my YouTube channel. So, there you go. Three out of four ain't bad. Check out Finn's clip at Just For Laughs. Um, and do check out his uh, Bullshit Bingo uh, oh my God, yeah. series on Comedy Central because they're both fantastic. The Scarlett Johansson bit. Mwah. Which we watched on before you came in today. Uh, that's on YouTube. They cut the best bit of that, I think. But anyway. Don't Enjoy. watch it. Don't bother. No, please do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming in, lads. Episode. Nice Call it. Get on me. <laughs>